Thank you, everyone. Uh, tonight is uh, Monday, May 15th. This is uh, Moortown Select Board. We're here in the John Hoagland meeting room. This is John on my right here. Um, so we'll start with the agenda at 6 o'clock. We have public comments. Is there anyone here with public comments? We uh, are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so three watchmen are not here no more. Um, who is our contact person? Wait, who, who are you? Jason uh, Peter. Um, I can be your contact person. My name's Tom. Tom. So Tom, I like you. The problem, uh, as you know, we're, the work has been going forward. It's a little darker. And, um, but uh, there's been misleading, misleading information going on. I don't know if to you guys or what, but um, saying that we haven't done the work and the work has been done. There's a paper that from a specialist on our units. Um, one, you guys didn't approve me as a contractor, and uh, I feel I really like to know why. Uh, I, well, that was done at the courts. I don't, I don't have that information, but I think I mean, some of the information that I had um, was they didn't approve your work because they had looked at some of your work previous. None of that work was mine. I build, uh, I build quality houses. I build a house in this town, well sought after. I built a million dollar home from the ground up. I have an excellent uh, resume. I did send to the town with big companies. I worked all over the south. Um, yeah, then the other thing they asked. Like you guys said I didn't do the work when I asked the tenant to move down to that unit so we could do the work on her unit. Um, there was misleading information to you guys in the courts. So I went and had that environmental company come in and evaluate that unit. Um, um, actually, the outside stairs are like we're being held too. I asked Mr. Your Dick to come to a meeting with fire marshals because the fire marshals are the ones that our stairways were out of code. I presented our plans to the fire marshals with Dick present, um, which the fire marshal said, "Yeah, that'll work fine." I do see one of the outside stairways is in. At fully code. I'm always in close contact with fire marshals. Um, at that time, um, why I said I wouldn't work with Dick was because when I said I asked fire marshals, "Can you please note that that upper deck, which is now replaced, is not safe to be used?" And uh, Dick blew up on me and said, "Oh, all you're trying to do is take more away from the tenant." When all I was trying to do is get it so I could tell that tenant. <laughs> from the fire marshal only use that for emergency services till it was replaced. Um, so there's so much misleading. I mean, this paper says I don't have funding. None of you guys know what I make, what I make, what I have for budget. Well, I think that was the thing. They, they had asked you for a budget. They never asked me for a budget. Nobody asked you. Um, Frank, I think you were asked for a budget. Whether Frank passed it on to you or not, I, I'm not certain. Nobody um, asked me. I had, insurance? Do you, have, do you have insurance? Yes, I am insured. I'm fully insured. Um, what is the definition of a contractor in Vermont? I've been asking for licenses for years. There is no definition of a contractor in Vermont. Um, two, not only do I own a construction company, I own a brick that does almost a million dollars in sales a year with my son. So my fund, and I own several properties outright, no mortgages. So as far as what I can afford and what I can't afford, and nobody has asked me that. And plus, no contractor goes into a project without getting a deposit. Um, there are several people that I asked Mr. when I gave my resume to talk to that you guys well know, Tim Crowley, um, Wayne Raymond, um, respected people around um, that I have worked under and for. And my father, for one, is um, well known with King Berry and all of them, which works for me is a master crafter. I've been building since I was 13 and 51. So I have an impressive resume. I feel this was personal because there's a lot of misleading representation. Like I said, I replaced last week in the rain, we replaced deck number two, the bad one below. Meanwhile, while I'm under there with chainsaw cutting it out, the tenant, which I have complained about, um, and said that I would need somebody 
town to represent because of, you know, I'm worried about false accusation stuff. Unloaded two totes of full water on us while we were cutting down below. Um, when I uh, sent a text message to her saying you know, later that night, I didn't appreciate that. She says, oh, geez, I'm sorry. I was going through my recycling, but she don't recycle. And my deck for flooding. That's assault by law. I don't know what we're in those fluids for one. So, um, but that work has been performed. The outside survey has been performed. I have, um, I've been, uh, Unit 6 was written off for violation by the fire marshal, and there's a health um, certificate of that unit um, because we were just told we shouldn't have run that unit because it wasn't a, it had health issues. I just gave you a report from a company, an environmental company that is out of Burlington that came and tested that unit for us. I mean, Dick has been also led into a lot of false, false um, things. Like they showed Dick the shower had low water pressure. What they did was the shower has a valve that, so you don't have to gush your water, you can turn it down while you're soaking up and then you can turn it back up. They turned that valve down on it because when I checked that unit, it was perfectly fine. Um, I am working completely really tight with the fire marshals, but I seem like the town doesn't. Nobody in the town wants to talk to me. I tried to talk to Mr. Washburn, but he says, I'm only for the stairways. I mean, and so we're really confused of who to talk to, even though we're going forward with all the work. I mean, the building needs some work, but we're on it. Uh, we have a roofing contractor, Bo Drive Roofing, coming in to, to do the roof. Um, the leak actually in that outside stairway is actually it's a piece of failed flashing where the roof's too intersect that's driven inside. And we're having another section of the roof replaced. Um, but I feel this assessment of me is completely very wrong, especially when I sent my resume and nobody asked me in my financials, which again, they would have to ask Frank for his financials because he's the one that has to pay for it up front. All I can carry is labor. I mean, I'm building a big house up on the commons right now, so. I'm well known for my carpentry and well sought after. So that work down there, that was done by other people. That's not my work. <laughs> so. All right. So so it's been a this has been a long process. Um, and at first it started with the the health uh, violations uh, <laughs> that were imposed upon the building, and and the health um, officer was asking Frank, all right, this this needs to be done. And it went on and went on and, and, and went on until finally we had to take it to the courts. Yes, okay, but let me explain this. But, uh, let me, may, let yeah. me finish. I'm sorry, sir. Um, at any time, we could have condemned those units and just shut them down uh, because of the work that was not being done. It, it's not what we want to do. We don't want to put people on the street. We don't want to put homeowner or, or Rental property owners out of business. <laughs> there's a there's a housing crisis as it is, okay. and that's why we are have been trying to go through the proper channels to make sure that it was done and done correctly. Because in the past there has been, <clears throat> and I guess you you admit it, more messed up work on those buildings, and it wasn't getting done. The last time the mold was fixed, it was fixed by people painting over it. Um, that does not fix. Uh, mold problem, <coughs> painting it over. And that's what led to, to us asking, we need um, a certified contractor with uh, a budget of what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, a, a time frame. That's all we asked. And uh, there's plenty of record of that, Frank. Frank, the courts, you went to court, and I, mean, I think you would agree. That was asked of you. Is that correct? Frank wasn't even coherent at that court meeting. He was violently sick and ill. He yeah, was hallucinating at that time with a UTI. I couldn't get Frank to ask the proper questions. And uh, as far as they, they claim the paint was over the mold, that wasn't, what that was was a crack that was filled with compound and some of the dirt was dragged into the mud. Um, just like they said, Unit 5, where Al lived for 13 years, was mouse infested and uh, they had a pile of sawdust, which I'm happy to evaluate because one, it's away from the wall. There's no signs of ants. I believe it was sage. The tenants, we tried to evict two tenants because their lease were up 
and this is when this all started. We had accusations of um, water running and we went there, we didn't have any. Um, it was actually a shower, what it was was Al wasn't even upstairs no more and they were using that shower in that unit and not closing the curtain and it went down by the tub from a lack of sealant and it dripped down in. I then worked with Dick and opened up that ceiling to show him, even though there were no signs of mold, that there was a mold inside that ceiling. Um, they claimed they didn't have hot water. We went there, we had the hot water tested. We hired um, Urban to come in, and it was inconvenience for them. And I don't know if you guys know how it works with companies. They don't give us a, they don't let us choose a time to come in. They give you a time. So we had to reschedule, so we had to pay for one trip fee, and then we had to pay again. Um, yeah, the water did freeze up on the coldest day, which was back up and running within 12 hours. But how many other houses in Vermont froze? And it was an air leak in the basement. Um, yes, yeah, so there is work that needs to be done, and it is going on, but we're just feeling nobody's working with us. Um, and, uh, and the tenants in question, so why don't, why don't, for one, have you paid rent in two years? Let me propose this then. Why don't um, you, Frank, um, maybe John, myself, and our lawyer um, sit down and straighten this out. We would love to have me have you. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, where, where I'm coming from is that you weren't in here sooner. I mean, What's that, sir? You weren't in here sooner. I mean, you've known what's been going on. We've yeah. been in touch constantly and everything. And, and you wait until... Yeah. But it doesn't matter what the, we, we were, were reaching out, yeah. though. We were reaching out and we were getting shut down on every corner. I mean, so, I this is, so why don't we do this um, next Monday? Why don't we get together at 10 o'clock in the morning? Okay. Does that work? Yeah. And if you could bring a budget of what you're going to do and what you're fixing, a uh, certificate of insurance, um, that would really jumpstart the process for us. Yeah. And, and a lot of the work has been completed. And then we can maybe take yeah. a walk over. Yeah. Um, is that, Frank, is that? You know, let me say that. You know, it's not, in an old building like that, or any old building, it's hard to come up with a budget. Because we don't know what the problem is until we dig into it. All right. Well, I don't need the. Or you know, to do the work. Exactly. Yeah. Right. When, Go in and maybe evaluate. Let me just bring a list of what you plan on doing and maybe, you know, um, in addition, after we open this wall up, there may be more problems. I don't need to know the, the, the real nitty gritty of it. We just want to make sure there is a uh, suitable solution, that, like for the, um, uh, the mold. You, you told me you got a contract for the roof. That's good. I mean, that's what but stops the, mold, the mold because yeah. the water comes down. Yes. So we're on the right track. And I think, um, you know, if you can demonstrate to us that you guys are know what you're doing and, and are willing to do it. And, and I, I think most of it is not so much that you haven't, or Frank hasn't known what's going on, he just hasn't really been willing to do it. We've had two yeah. unwilling tenants that have been unwilling to let us do the work. There has been um, stage things, there have been mysterious happenings. Um, these tenants, one, vacated the apartment, a year was over rent. Um, that one paid their rent Part of the rent at, to that court date and hadn't paid since. Um, you guys, like our inside stairways, you know, everybody wants to make that big thing, but that's three quarters of an inch out, which is going to be adjusted inside the stairway. But the town hall is, is just as much out as my stairway is. You know, it, it, it's not a matter like we don't want to hire a uh, engineer to come in and draw a set of stairs that you easily pull, make one out of code, you have the fire marshal come check it, and then you tear out the old one and you put in that same one in three hours. I mean, I don't need a, a thousand dollar drawing for that when I invited the fire marshal and I tried to invite Dick, but then that's when Dick blew up on me trying to defend the upstairs tenant. Yeah, anyone. And all I was trying to do was work with the fire marshals so I can say legitimately, you can only use that deck until it's replaced. So I'm not looking like I'm trying to be take things away. You can only use that by fire marshal's order for emergency access. You know, to get out in sure. case of a fire. So, so there's a two-way street here. But I know. understand that, and we're not. Looking and I feel you guys are being misled, and that's why I I agree we should sit down and have 
Right, and, and, and we're not looking for the Taj Mahal. You know, we're, we're just looking for something that people can live in and be safe and um, healthy, if you will. And it, it's easy. Again, we're, we don't want to be in this position. Um, we just want the place habitable. And so let's get together uh, 10 o'clock on Monday. Is, okay. it, is that the only time you can do it? Um, does that not work for you? No. What was good for you? Wednesday. Um, I just want. I'd like to do it as soon as. Okay. Sooner you, than, you, um, why don't you someone contact Frank on a time and date that work for all you guys? Like I said, I'm building a house on the common or I'm down on the river. But all right, we'll do that. But we'll do it uh, relatively uh, very soon. I, I want yeah, to, give me a few days to get it all together. And, okay. And uh, and that way we can figure it all out. Sounds good. Thank yeah, you, sir. Right. You're welcome. Right. Thanks Thank for your you. time. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, uh, Thank you Jason. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You still speak with Ray occasionally? I do, yes. Okay. I've been in touch with him, but he was disapproved to oversee. Okay. Right. Well, once he's not on the board, he's kind of lost that. So, but thank you, Ray. I mean, um, Frank, we yep. will see you. Uh, uh, sometime next week, hopefully. Have you picked it? Did you pick a time yet? No, 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 no. We're, we're going to yeah. figure out a time amongst ourselves. We were going to do it Monday at 10. That doesn't work for John. I'd like to, John, because he's been involved in the project forever, uh, be, a, be there. And uh, yeah, we'll I, have, I have something going on Monday anyway. Okay. okay. Are there any days? Any other day, I think it would be okay. Okay. Only We'll figure it out then. Okay. All right. Give me a call. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Excellent. All right, sir. I got All right. Just for the record, uh, I've got Robert's iPad. Who's who is this? Who's that? Hello, whoever's with on uh, Robert's iPad, if you could just identify yourself for the record, please. We'll wait on that. Any other um, public comment? Corey? No, I'm here for Mark. All right. Martin, you're here for uh, probably the envelopes, the bidding later. Um, so let's go ahead and. Uh, you should be. I just want to say a huge thank you to the road crew for mulching the town hall gardens. They look really nice. Nice. So thank you. That was awesome. Yeah, it looks nice out around the, the building here and getting the weeds and everything. Thanks, Martin. And gentlemen. Um, so, yeah, so if uh, Cheryl Lynn and Sam, and Sam, is this you on the left? Hi, yeah. yes, I'm Sam Lash. Yeah. Is it easier for me to talk there? Please do. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. So Sam, um, she's from CDRPC, yes. and she's going to be talking about the um, MERP grant or MERP grant. Yeah, absolutely. You, everyone can feel free to post right up if you want. Um, so I'm Sam Lash, she hers. I'm the Climate and Energy Planner from Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. Uh, please let me know if I speak too quickly or if it's too muffled and I can slow down. Um, it's been all, you know, the end of the, end of the day, <laughs> sometimes I get going, so feel free to just stop me in a sentence, that's all right. All right, so just for a little background, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission, basically there, Vermont has county structure, but no county government. Uh, the 11 planning commissions were formed to fill that gap, at least in terms of planning. So Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission is made up of our 23 member towns, including four towns. So that's just sort of a little background for what the RPCs are. And I sort of manage the climate and energy program. I also work in health equity and emergency management and a little bit of transportation. So uh, that's me. So the Municipal Energy Resilient Grant Program, um, basically MERC for short. Yes, I already heard it. Very exciting. <laughs> so this was uh, passed on June 2nd, 2022. This is Act 172. It provides $45 million to promote dependable and sustainable 
um, connections to critical municipal services. So basically, Vermont has legally binding um, global warming uh, goals, so emissions reductions goals, and they recognize that uh, a great way to sort of reduce emissions, but also support communities, was by targeting municipal buildings and facilities with uh, a large investment. So there are three parts of the, the program, and it's really two central pieces. And I want to note that for anybody taking notes, um, and anybody in the room, I will send an email, likely right after this, potentially in the morning, depending on if there's traffic or a storm, <laughs> um, that re-outlines the program with links. I've made all of our towns a website, so it's really clear. So, you know, don't worry if you miss anything or if I go on a list, like, you're going to get it all again in the email, and it's also on the website. But, so there are three big components. There are two main ones that I like to think about as phase one and phase two. And then there is uh, one additional component, which is the community capacity grants, which congratulations, you already have. Um, so that is $4,000 to support energy resilience, community capacity building. And that can mean a lot of different things. That means you could uh, use it to support your energy coordinator and you know um, have events and flyers, et cetera, to have an energy committee. You could use it for an event for say, you know, residential weatherization or, or something like that. You could use it to bring a consultant to the town on a specific project. You could use it to um, kind of do a wide variety of things. And I have a list of pre-approved things that the Regional Planning Commissions have worked together with the Building and General Services, which is the department who's administering the program. We work for them through this program to support all of you through this. So we've built a list of, of options of how you can use that, and also I'm here to brainstorm about how you want to use that. So you can think about that piece as sort of separate. So the big, the big two pieces of the program are a, um, uh, the first phase one is free energy assessments. So these are by state contractors. So these are for municipal buildings and facilities. There are two levels. That application is going to come out yesterday. No, I mean, it's going to come out in the next month or so. And so I have a, a list of things that we can do to get ready for that um, and sort of I can answer questions and we can talk about the levels. But before I do that, the big piece and why everybody's excited about this is those energy assessments make you eligible for sort of what I call phase two, $500,000 without that. So um, that $500,000 is for building renovation projects, including weatherization, um, thermal efficiency of your buildings, uh, and supplementing or replacing fossil fuel heating systems. Okay? Is that per town? That is, so that is competitive. So yes, oh, okay. up to $500,000 per to town. Up to per town, okay, thank you. However, we, you know, unlike, so the community capacity, that $4,000, they did have enough for every town. Um, this $500,000, <coughs> They don't. Okay. But you know, if you do the math with that forty-five million and minus all the other pieces off, we think it's probably sixty to seventy towns are likely to receive this. Okay. So, which is pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's you know, let's be real. It's pretty great. And if not all towns apply for that full funding, or they decide to you know give smaller grants, you know, there's flexibility there. Now, I will say they are still designing that piece of the program, but. What we can do in the meantime is get ready for those free energy assessment applications because you have to do that in order to be eligible for the next, for that big money, that big pot of money. Um, and there are two levels there, level one and level two. Now I am telling all of our towns that it's best to go to level for the level two unless you have very, 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 very recently done an investment grade audit, which this building is in pretty great shape, so maybe that might be the case for this one, but it never hurts. Um, so uh, the level two does take a little bit more, uh, you know, pulling five years of your electric bills, of your heating bills, um, you know, if you have architectural plans and drawings, this, you know, I have this list which is online and I can also run through the whole thing now, but that's pretty much most of it. Um, and, you know, uh, thinking about if you have um, any ADA accessibility issues, um, if you have any hazardous materials that you know about, it's just getting this kind of information all in one place. And I'm going to tell you, it's not a bad idea to do that anyways. <laughs> so you're not really going to waste any effort here. And we do think that all towns are likely to receive at least one, if not several, of those energy assessments. So 
I really can't think of any good reason not to go for the level two. And if we're missing a big piece or you know something happens and we, and we can't get that together, they're still here and we can go for the level one, which is just a, you know, a walkthrough. But, so that level two is an investment, it's sort of the equivalent to an investment grade audit, like an ASHRAE level two plus, because depending on town's priorities, it's also gonna look at um, EV charging infrastructure placement. It's gonna look at if, if the towns request it, um, renewable energe energy generation and storage on site. Like where might be the best place for that? What do you need to do to get ready for it? So it's, it's really, the report of those audits are really a, a data in and of themselves, which will help you also apply to other federal and state programs that are coming down the line. Because we know that they're, you know, given the acts that have just gone through at the federal level, we're gonna see over the next 10 years quite a bit of investment in the form of these sort of climate and energy grants. Can I take questions now before I continue blathering on? So, so the a level two, now does that cover every building in town or is that just one, how does that work? So any building that the municipality owns is eligible. Okay, that was my question. Yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. So as far as I understand, town hall, library, town offices, fire department, and I'm missing one. Garage. Garage, thank you, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and if you have others, let's add that to the list. <laughs> Yep. Energy on it that could cover condensation. The condensation yeah. thing that oh, we have. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent. So, and I think and because the elevator over at the uh, town hall. Right. So, identify these yeah. is really helpful to put that narrative together. So, you know, it, let's let's you know think. Okay, everything goes super well, and we get that 500k for more town. Um, you can use, I believe, I want to say it's up to 20 percent, but I will double check for the ABA work. You can use 10% for administration, I believe. And I will um, I will send these all uh, in the email and on the website. So if the email on the website says a different number than I just said, please go with the email on the website. <laughs> um, but I'm pretty sure those are correct. Um, and you know, I think uh, it's, it's a really good moment to sit down with your town plan, you know, sit down with your, your capital and investment plan, sit down with you know, everything you already have and you said you want to do as a town and think about like, Okay, and you know, pie in the sky, potentially a huge chunk of money. You know, how do we match this to make our ideal project work? And like, what do we want to do for our community? And how do we want to make that look? So, you know, you have a great, you have a great building here. You might say, okay, we want to make sure that we have um, heating and cooling that's efficient and resilient, so that we can have it as a cooling and warming shelter. You know, you can. I mean, these are the kinds of conversations I think are also really good to have. When you're having this, it's not just about the data and the numbers. It's, you know, how how do we utilize this as an investment, right, into forward. our community? Now, you, another word you said there, um, match. Um, so yes. I'm thinking, is, so is there is a matching program at all or anything like that? No match. But if we want to put our own funds yes. towards a project, mm -hmm. that's kind of the match. Yeah, and let me okay. yeah, and let me say that is it sounds too good to be true. Um, it. It isn't in a way, there is no match, but, but to be fair, some of these projects might be, you know, have a price tag that's far more than sure. this. So yeah. it's working with sure. us, it's working with Vermont leagues and cities and towns. Right. You know, if, if it's, you know, if it makes sense, depending on the building, with the preservation trust, et cetera, we'll help you coordinate with all those folks to find you those matching funds. So, okay. but this gets you a good chunk of the way that for most, for yeah, most no, I think most projects would really fall off. Yeah, <laughs> and you can bundle projects, different projects from your different municipal buildings, all within the same application for this project funds. So you don't have to focus on one thing. Now I do wanna say that they are prioritizing um, a few different things and have, like, on who's gonna get those project funds first. So that does include energy burden, that also includes geography, that includes the size of the town. So they are trying to um, sort of make sure they prioritize smaller towns, towns who, who might not have had capacity to go for some of the federal grants on their own. Um, uh, you know, more towns energy burden uh, need is, is low compared to a lot of other Vermont communities. That doesn't mean that you're out of the running, but I do think it's important to just be realistic about, about that um, upfront. Um, I still think it, it, it makes 100% sense to go for it. The, the whole point of this is to, so it's supposed to be accessible. Um, and we are here to help you. You don't have to use my help. Also, you don't want to be quite upfront about that, but we're here. Um, and if you do email uh, Building General Services, you will get CC'd back to me. <laughs> 
but it doesn't hurt to try. Um, but I'm here to answer questions, uh, you know, support you in your project development, um, you know, whatever you need. Cheryl, uh, did you have a question, Cheryl? No, we've talked. We've been talking. I'm Doug Green. I speak as the chairman of the regional plan. Hi. We did the um, intermodal parking lot here. And at that time, it was an energy saving because we also, the regional planning commission does busing. So the idea is you can park here, then you can use the bus in the middle place. So it was an energy, and it was back to the the warming and such, but it was planning. You talked about structures and facilities, with mm -hmm. parking facilities, paving the parking facility part of this? So um, thus far, it, the answer has been probably not, but I will put it uh, to them again. There's no, no harm in asking. Um, it really is structure, it is focused on the municipal buildings, but facilities are sort of trying to include like wastewater and, um, and some of those sort of pump stations. But I, there's no reason, I will add that to my list. Yeah, sure. Corey? I'm Corey Stevens and I'm the library director and part of the town hall committee, so I don't know what Cheryl has told you about where we're at with that. But we're moving forward for the next phase of design documentation. Right. And there could be a need for a um, engineering study yeah. done on the site. Okay. Would that be something that would qualify for the four thousand dollars potentially? I believe so, and I will uh, double check. We did have some language um, that was just going up to the commissioner to double check in terms of design and study and sort of what phase could count that four thousand dollars could go for versus that being part of the potential project funds. So I will I will definitely double check. Okay. But it's possible. <laughs> I mean basically there is no no right now. It's it's you know what they what they envisioned and um, I, I think that uh, building general services is doing a great job as a Herculean effort. Um, uh, and, and they are um, ex absolutely experts at what they do. Um, and it's their first time working with municipalities, and so I think it's been really fruitful for them to understand the level of need and sort of the state of uh, a lot of our town buildings, and especially town garages, and, and sort of, so they are extremely open to being flexible, um, which is great. That's all, all you can ask for in an administrating body, right? So I think that it's always good to ask, and we're putting questions to them regularly, so. That's great, thank you. And nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. I look forward to yeah, working with you throughout this. And anything else? <laughs> There's a bunch of library grants right now, so. Right, and that's the other piece that um, someone did ask a question to the Department of Libraries of how these two grant programs mm -hmm. would or could interact. I guess the only other question I have is the Department of Libraries is probably going to be a reimbursement model, although that's not confirmed. Mm -hmm. Will this also be a reimbursement model, or you don't know yet? Um, so one of the things we did strongly advocate was for that not to be the case, was that to be upfront. And we do believe we, we did a, get received uh, confirmation that it will be upfront, or they are trying their best. And they think right now it will be upfront. Okay. So I, I think we're unlikely to see a reversal. Right. Again, we're about a year out from that phase sort of being fully designed and then opening. Yeah. So it could change. Um, so don't, you know, don't hold me against the wall about it. but. No, right now it is not envisioned to be reimbursement based. It's upfront. Yeah, we're, so there's a big thing that we, we sort of advocate for in most programs that are directed at towns. It's, yeah, it's, you know, we'll relate anyone. Yeah. <laughs> reimbursement is a, is a big burden. <laughs> yes, please. Good to see you. So the level two is mm -hmm. that, um, that phase one, is that very competitive? No, so we don't think that those, so the energy assessments are supposed to be available to all towns. Um, now they are supposed to be done by the end of this calendar year. Um, and, that, and the application hasn't opened yet. Um, and so we have encouraged them to seek an extension um, so that there isn't a med dash. Respecting all of your time and understanding um, that, you know, this stuff takes time. And also, you know, doing four contractors across the state would be a tall order. But um, we do envision that all, all towns who want them should be able to receive them. Um, that level two, I should mention, also makes you um, eligible for a uh, extension of this program, which is a revolving loan fund. But that's not that's not part of this of this um, of, of the of sort of this part of it. But we can talk about that. That that should be standing open, um, you know, after this program is finished and into the future, um, as part of a, a sort of. Um, you know, this is sort of a one-time only deal, um, but that revolving loan fund they envisioned 
we'll have sort of a you know a longer life cycle. That's a great thing. Have I thoroughly confused everyone? No, 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 no. Okay, good. You've done a nice job. Um, so, the applications for this uh, first phase of the 4,100 um, uh, or 2 grants, uh, what are they looking like? Yeah, so we're just starting to do the energy assessments are opening up. You've already received your, your 4,000, Sherilyn. Yeah, so you've you're done your golden on that front. Um, and then we're going to do our phase one energy assessments. That should open up within the month. Um, okay. But I, and I will tell you, well, you'll get an email directly, you'll get an email, and anybody who else wants one, that's fine, I'll leave my card on the table too. Um, you know, I will be, and then I will email and then be calling all the towns, um, again, <laughs> sorry, um, to let them know that the application has opened. Um, but there is a, you know, that list of stuff you can already start pulling together to be prepared for it, and, and I will also be happy to help folks through that application as well. And then when do you see the next phase of the... Yep, great question. So, um, let me get my cheat sheet timeline here. So, um, so we expect these energy assessments, they were supposed to be completed by, I think it was January 15th, but, you know, given the holidays and everything, sure. we were saying end of year. Um, you know, we think that there might be an extension there, but uh, basically the implementation grants would open in 2024. That's the $500,000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and those capacity grants, that $4,000, has to be uh, obligated by the end of 2024. Um, basically, the timeline after that is that the implementation funds, again, that $500,000, would have to be expended by December 31st, 2026, and project completed by 2028. So, we've got some time. Um, it's kind of one of those, like, hurry up, get your stuff in order, and then build a narrative and know what direction you're going in, and then kind of wait. <laughs> hurry up and wait. That's hurry up and wait. I'm sorry to say. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, but for $500,000, yeah. you mm -hmm. patient. Right. Yeah. Well, and as I said, there's really, there really are so many programs. So, for example, the state's about to, you know, um, through uh, the Agency of, of Commerce and Community Development, have three uh, EV charging uh, programs, right, multi-unit work workplace and then public attraction. So there's all these other grants coming out. So if you have this assessment done and you know where you want to put it, you know, it just makes a lot of other applications streamlined, right? And you've already had a state contractor through a state program to, you know, work with you to establish that. It just, you know, it hopefully, my hope at least, is that this will also streamline some of the work for other applications. You know, if you get really ambitious and say, you know, we want to do uh, you know, renewable energy generation project uh, and storage and this, you know, this whole big thing and, you know, get all this data, we can go for a USDA REIT grant or something, you know, so it really, you, it, I think it's this, this part especially is just really useful and it's the perfect time. No, I, I would agree. And some of that we've done, some of what we've done doing it anyway, so yeah. I think it's for opportunity. And I don't want to step in hot water, but um, I know that Martana had at one point dra uh, drafted their enhanced energy plan. Um, not a bad time to look, you know, you're doing a lot of the same um, work and pulling together, you know, what you want to do as a town and how you want energy to fit into that. Um, and we are currently updating the regional data and we'll have that available for town. So if that's something that you'd like to pick back up, that's, it's, a, it's a perfect timing for that as well. I'll leave that there. No pushing. You can do what you want, um, but there you go. <laughs> can I ask one more question? How many towns in the Central Vermont Regional Planning District would you say are like, ready to go for the five hundred thousand? It's a very, very tough question. Um, um, first of all, I don't even know how many towns. Yes, we have twenty-three. <laughs> um, let's see. I can say that we've had about 14 or 15 apply and receive the $4,000, if that sort of, you know, gives you an indication. Um, uh, I have, you know, been only to a handful of sort of select board meetings. It doesn't always, you know, different towns operate very differently. Um, you know, some are, you know, want me there, some are perfectly happy for me to brief somebody else and then, you know, or that's their preference even. So. It's a little hard to say. Um, I think I would hope, my hope and my goal is to get every town to apply for these assessments. And then, you know, to sit down, um, you know, and go through and, and, and really help folks once we have all that data in hand figure out, okay, 
you all should go for this these project funds or hey you know you four are perfect for this other grant or you four are perfect for this or whatnot so I think that that sort of you know the approach will 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 grow and change with that second phase so I can't give you no that's good information <laughs> yeah well, we have a primary power here so we could probably we could power you be part of you know, our project Great. bond would be that be part of something but the definition of a facility is it's energy it's certainly a facility yeah. it's next to all the buildings so they can be used yeah. is yeah. that something they might be part of so um, I will continue advocating that I think um, it would be great if the program would consider not only supporting like EV ready and solar ready steps, but maybe comprehensive projects that would include you know installation and construction of those kinds of things. I think the general sense I've gotten thus far is that the the program's emphasis is getting a lot of those uh, baseline you know that there are enough buildings and facilities basically that need a whole lot of weatherization and thermal envelope and replacement of that oil. So I'm not sure though. So you should for it, talk to a representative of whether or not a facility includes yes. parking as opposed to just yes. the structure itself. Well, I think I, you can absolutely, I think you, you know, absolutely fit the definition, definition if you want to apply. My answer, I think, is more about how they're going to prioritize the project. So I think it would certainly be eligible. But I would also say that because this is unmatched, I might encourage us to look for, you know, 500K of projects elsewhere in these buildings. And, and if there isn't, put that <coughs> But I would still absolutely support you and all in the town to utilize the other funding programs that are going to get you that EBSE, perhaps even faster, uh, with some of the state ones. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I'm not just here to support you with this program. I'm here to support you uh, generally. And um, there are quite a few programs. And I'm I call Brahman and ACCD every every six weeks and say, okay, you got my updated timeline. So um, those programs should be out uh, very soon. To get you that in the SA, absolutely. Yeah. And we can also, in the meantime, take a look at some of the sites that, you know, if there is a preference for sites, um, we can look at those and see, okay, great, they have three phase power or, or they don't. Is your panel up? To, if we can do some of that leverage like, right now, absolutely, for sure. Great. Yeah. Anything else for Sam? Sam, anything mm -hmm. else for us that we should know? Oh, goodness. Um, Just a minute. Um, I will be, I guess, in, within the year, so this is very early, but within the year, I will be reaching back out to all towns, um, if I don't already know that off the top of my head after working on this program with you all, um, for, you know, projects and priorities, um, in the energy space, uh, and where they are in your town plan, if they are, or in a draft of, or, or whatnot, um, because the state of Vermont has applied for, um, the climate, uh, pollution reduction program, so they have a free, they'll get a three million uh, dollar grant for planning, and then anything that's included in that plan um, will be eligible for. I want to say it's want to say it's twenty seven million, but it could be off uh, for implementation funds at the federal level. So that will be extremely competitive. But Vermont is also one of the few states that has a comprehensive plan at the moment, so we are in a, in a good position to potentially um, see some implementation funds. And, and my, my hope um, is that I'm able to put together, you know, uh, some projects that would cover several towns, you know, quite a few towns. So, you know, we have eight towns interested in this, five towns interested in this. Like, can we can we aggregate those, you know, across the state and, and put in for some implementation projects where there are common interests? So, um, if you see an ask from me, Please, if you don't want to email me back, that's fine, but at least give me a call back. <laughs> so I don't forget to include you. That's all. Yeah. So never bad to enshrine, enshrine anything in your in your town plan. We do look at it for projects. Um, and, and so will the state. So. Great. Um, that's a great presentation. Um, I look forward to working. I mean, I'm sure the board and the chairman are working with you going moving forward. Perfect. Um, if there's nothing else. Thank you. Good. Thank, Thank you so much for the Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, Shella, I give you my card. I got it. Perfect. 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 Thank you. Absolutely. Um, no, I'm sorry. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much. We'll take just a second and we have um, greater talk. Martin, you want to move up to the.
So first, let's take, we have the greater bids here. Right? You probably know what they are in a lot, but let's, uh, let's open those up and then we're going to, um, you know, I don't know we're going to pick the thing, how's that? All right, so the first one is uh, from uh, Jeff Slade. He's the territory manager at um, uh, Cap Milton. Milton Cap. Um, I think it was the one in And um, they talk about their, their um, history uh, in, the, in, the, in the area and such. They're proposing a um, one new 2024 uh, 140 all-wheel drive motor graded with zero out of the All wheel being six wheels. Or? Yeah, I think. Um, net um, with a trade. So they're figuring a trade in here. Um, their discounted cost is 444900 they're giving us forty-five thousand dollars for the uh, the trade-in for a net um, of three hundred ninety-nine thousand nine hundred, and this pricing is about valid, valid through June twentieth, twenty twenty-three. What was the trade-in? Forty-five thousand. So it made it three ninety-nine nine hundred. Okay. Um, they talk about leases. They have leases up to ten years. Rate that. Yeah. So yep. Do we did they give you a finance rate on the lease? No. Um I'm just trying to see if there's anything else on this that we should know. Martin, is there anything else that you should know about this? I would definitely want to look it over. I have of I course, but I but that. is there something obvious uh, that no, no, I haven't um, um, two hundred and fifty two horsepower if that is This is from United. And this is uh, for a 2023 uh, 772G. Uh, and their bid price is uh, $392,000. No trade, or is that with the trade and all wrapped up in it? Uh, let me go through this. Oh, okay, sure. sure. Let me go. Uh, delivered week of 10 27 2023, if ordered by 5 15. Wing or plow price. All right, so this might be where things where we'll have to take a look at it. Um, and wing at 22,000, front harness at 8,000. And a plow at 19.5. So the mass that's on top of. I don't know. Um, I spoke with Gretchen about um, depending on where the cost got us, if potentially keeping the old plow um, and the wing, although the wing may not match up to the new unit, um, there's very little use. I mean, it's used, but not. So I don't know, I guess I'd have to look at that. I would hope that it would include it and then subtract it from there, but I'm not sure. Yeah, and then there's trading allowance of uh, 50,000. So, um, but I guess either of those really don't tell us anything until Martin goes through. Um, yeah, well, yeah I mean, if it's uh, 392 and then add all those extras, it's yeah. kind of a wash. But yeah. yeah. Um, but if it's 392 and we can take that off the top, then that would be something. Okay. I'm just looking real quick in the other one whether it says whether it has. Includes uh, um, twelve foot angle plow and the twelve foot snow wing. 
So, let's just do this. Oh, that's a new one, is that right? That, yeah, that we wanted that? Got, yeah, this was in the um, spec sheet, so it was, um, it, it, maybe it's included and then it's subtract that if we don't want it. I don't know. We'll have to yeah, you'll have to check and contact. Yeah. yeah. Or, we just, So if we add in, yeah. if we add in the uh, the wing, the front of harness, and the plow, it would uh, if it's not included, the base price comes up to four hundred and forty-one thousand five hundred. Okay. Minus minus the five. Minus fifty. Break this right Still a little bit cheaper, but I mean, yeah, it's three ninety-one yeah. as opposed to yeah. three ninety-two. <laughs> <laughs> What's a billion oh, here? Right. <laughs> five. Yeah. Five versus versus three ninety nine. Three ninety nine. So, um, why don't you take a look at these monitors? Mm -hmm. okay. I know, from Gretchen. Um, and then come back for the or you are in a way or another with what yeah. you think is the best. Oh, you can just email Sasha even if you get a reply so we can all... Oh, yeah, yeah, no, we'll get it back. Yeah. Yeah, you go back to her and just have her send it. No, 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 no. Take a look at yourself right now. No, or, no, 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 okay. You don't have enough time to do that. Yeah. Okay. Tomorrow, yeah. 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 yeah, sit down, uh, take the time by yourself or whatever, and just go through it and figure yeah. it out. Yeah, so I guess we'll contact both of them and make sure that it's... Apples, apples. The yep. spec sheet was pretty detailed. Uh, well, yeah, I know. I saw that. Yeah, in. Yeah, approve that. Finance yeah. can earn that. Excellent. Uh, no. Just said it, guys. Where did the three hundred thirty-five thousand dollars come from? The original figure. Was that work from Shannon or Suzanne or I don't. What was her name that spoke with you? That was originally a rough. Three thirty-five. Yeah. Or the yeah, that's a lot more than what we were looking at. Yeah, when, we, when she was in here, budget it was like 404. Um, that's what I brought to the board with the initial budget price <laughs> that we we're going. So um, it's nice to see it's come down a team bit, not a lot, but that's not up any. But yeah, I think it was 404 is what the price that I brought in. But when, when she was here, I thought she mentioned, did she mention three? Mm -hmm. That figure came from somewhere, because that's what we were talking about. Uh, I didn't, when she was here last yeah. meeting? I don't yeah. recall her mentioning yeah. any dollar figure whatsoever, to be honest with you. So yeah, I Because she said it only went up like three bucks or four dollars or something like right. that. Yeah. yeah I don't remember saying that, yeah, yes. And it had been. Because that's what we went off with with the finance committee for me. When it was first starting to be discussed. Yeah. Either way it is what it is, but yeah. yeah, take a look back and see what you have there all and we can even check the minutes out or whatever. But it doesn't matter, this is what her bid is. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I know the, the original like budget numbers that I got, what one was gonna cost was four hundred four thousand is what we started at. Right. right. But and then did, did she give you some numbers? Yeah, we did a build, um, she, because it's right on their website to do a build. We did a build and it came in at like 379. That didn't include um, the wing or the plow. The wing or the plow, yeah. 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 So yeah. it was a little convoluted, but I didn't end up playing with it much because it's. Okay, because maybe that's where I heard yeah. it came in at 370 yeah. something. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, and I do recall that, that the price was off your 404, she original. said it wouldn't, it hasn't gone up or down right. based on that. Uh, yeah, oh, you're talking, you know, close yeah. to 100 grams. So that, there's, <laughs> yeah. so, 
discrepancy in what they promised. So, uh, so there will not be a decision made this evening because Martin has not looked at them yet. No, no, no. So these interest rates will probably change then because this was only good until the 23rd. Okay. So we're, I'm going to have to get um, new, and more than likely the interest rates will not be Right. Um, so what were your terms on the show? We got 10, 12, and 15 minutes at 4.69%. And the, this was the lowest one. The other banks came back higher. This was 10 interest. years, I'm sorry? We what had 10, 12, and 15 years. Oh, okay. I had them do three different terms. Okay. Um, with the same interest rate, but Career. this was the lowest. Two thousand. Four point one. Sorry. Four point one. Four point six nine. Four point six nine. You know what? Maybe um, Martin or Sasha could give me a favor and um, throw a copy of I think it's the introduction sheet or whatever, and it talks about some of their financing with John, um, yeah. another cat. And if you could do that right now and give that sheet to Cheryl Lane and Cheryl, maybe you could reach out. Mm -hmm. That person and ask them about their 10 year yeah. lease because I know uh, John Deere said they had seven, which I don't think would work, but maybe right. starting at 10, that 10 might. Uh, um, yeah. And if I recall right, the finance yeah. committee went on a 12 year note. Okay. Um, well, we got 16 well, years out of the last one, so. And also, <laughs> uh, when you <laughs> talk to John. <laughs> Cat. Oh, I didn't notice um, a delivery date in there. Although, again, I kept yeah. saw they were there for 30 seconds, so there may be something there. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's all the same for what Cat was um, over a year ago. That's the yeah. last one. But, yeah. but yeah. if we're yeah. talking about uh, October, the Cat for John Deere, <laughs> then that's because the time we shut down. Yeah. Right yeah. Now. Um, so, Either way, we need to make it through the summer of what we've got. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so that's all right. So, I will look them over, I'll make contact with both of them, make sure that things are, are yeah, things yeah. are as they seem. Um, find a couple of things to bring up, um, the biggest thing being sand. Uh, so, um, Donahue. As I reach out to him, he wants nothing. He doesn't even want to rebid it from um, Northeast. Um, reached out to Adam Stone. Um, he went from 687 from Varens to 850. Um, and this is where it gets tricky because uh, from Northeast it will be tons, not yards. Varens is yards. It's tons. There's a conversion of 1.3, is what. Northeast uses as a conversion to yards, but basically a load. You know, they're, yeah. It, okay. It's um, so um, a, a significant amount. Um, reached out to Grandfield. Um, he came in back with eight and a quarter. Um, reached out to the Zally, and he was double digits. So significantly more from. Northeast, they all came in like a dollar or more. No, Why is that? Do you know? Feel. Just is, is it further apart? Is it further? It's not that much further, but the whole South Ferry and Quarry Hill. Mm. Oh, is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, they're going to use more fuel, I think, is what they're planning on. Right. Timelines, it's probably a little bit further, 10 minutes or so. And that's the aggregate or whatever. That's the, uh, yeah, the plant mix, the winter mix, yeah. they call it, but okay. it's basically a half inch plant mix. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I don't know what we want to do. The other one I didn't get from was Barrett's. Um, I'm going to jump to them and see what they want. They want to get on it. Um, so it was a little bit disappointing. I was hoping that. Uh, because Donahue was from that area, as is Adam Stone, they might, yeah. you know, uh, come in about the same. But so it's we're, later in the year too. I mean, we were really diligent about getting sand bits out early, right? Which was great. Time. But then we get the information we got, and yeah. um, kind of set us back. So now everybody's got work lined up. So they're yeah. not as hungry. eager. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, can you, you mind going over those one more time? Okay. Uh, 
So Adam Stone, who was second in line, um, went from uh, I think 687 uh, to um, 850. Okay. Grandfield was third in line at seven dollars from Varings to eight and a quarter from Northeast. Uh, Pizzali was eight dollars from Varens, and I just he didn't give yeah. me a hard number, but he said it would definitely be double digits. Um, you know, like ten dollars, nine fifty, ten dollars. It would it definitely would be higher. Yep. And then the other one would be Barrett system. So. And that um, so okay, the division uh, with the uh, yards and, and, and pounds, I guess, or tonnage. Is that eight twenty five? Is that what's the difference between that and the six or seven dollars? Right. No, it's going to work out approximately the same. So let's uh, tonnage is probably the most accurate right way to do aggregates and stuff. Right. The only thing is, is the potential is there. So let's say um, they all only haul on rainy days for us. Right. We're going to pay. We're going to pay. <laughs> A lot for tonnage because it's going to be wet and fat right. right. um, Yeah. But I mean, it's just it's the way it is. Yeah, it's the name of the game. But if it's not pouring, they're going to get into dry stuff in the middle of the pile, and it's, you're you're paying for what you're getting tonnage wise. So it's uh, either way. I did not up my sand budget enough to cover. I, I did up it, but I didn't up it to these. Hauling yards, and I did not up it enough for variance to go up two dollars a yard. Like I think I put in fifty cents a yard to go up, and it's up two dollars a yard. So it's uh, luckily we have a significant amount of sand left over uh, that we're going to try to mix and also keep off to the side some for Stephen to use in his hauling caster. Yeah. Um, so until we run this for a season, I don't really know what to expect. Come on, the plastic. Yeah, I suspect there'll be more complaints of we're not, we're not sanding as much. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. It's not as visible. It's, you know, but yeah, it is. Well, it falls around me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, what would you suggest to be? Um, should we reach out to Derek's then? Yeah, I think I can do that. Um, I mean, it sounds like Adam Stone was the least. The lowest overall increase. I mean, he went from seven to eight and a quarter. The other one went from six eighty to eight fifty. Uh, I don't. Grandfield uh, is the low. Uh, yeah, the Grandfield is the lowest eight twenty five. Oh, I'm sorry, 80. that was Grandfield. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. So they went pretty close to even jumps. Um, yeah. Right. Do that, um, and then we'll just pull the trigger on one. Yeah. I told them, you know, if they don't get, it's getting. It's not late in the season, but it's getting later. If they even want to just commit to 2,000 yards, you know, converted to tons, that, that at least gets us something in the pit that we don't have to haul and we can get work done because we can do what we need to. But uh, I think the only other thing I had was uh, may or may not have noticed Northfield came over last week and put up the uh, covered bridge. Um, signs warning about the covered bridges on the mountain road, um, and so probably didn't notice them because they're not that noticeable. <laughs> you know what I mean? They just kind of blend in. So they want to know if uh, the town would allow a solar blink light on one of them. And I don't know. I told them I said I definitely would need to ask before we get it to draw attention to the sign. Is it? Close to everyone's home? Um, the only, so the, the first sign is at the substation on Morton Mountain Road. Okay. Um, and then the second one is just before South Hill. So the one just before South Hill would probably have the least impact on residents. Um, but they were asking to put it on the first one, but I didn't get into in the Can we get sun on that second one? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. So, yeah, I would say we give it a, a try there. Right, I told him I said that. Yeah. Yeah. And at least maybe possibly try it and see what. We can that's do. closer to the actual bridge too. So yeah, it may, yeah. It may almost make more sense yeah, I mean, to put the, the blinking the, light closer the, to the bridge than farther away. And then the you, some you know, station, even if, it's they, sound. even if they notice the sign, there's no place to turn around. Right, to get yeah. to the four corners right. anyway. Right. So. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good idea, and then yeah. as long as we don't have tons of pushback, we right. can just leave it there. And yeah. 
all that starts no. causing someone's seizures, then we'll have to read yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So those, the prices that you gave, that was not too big? No, this was me verbally speaking with these people. But originally? Originally went out to bed, and I just worked from the bottom up. So, no, I mean, yeah, we had already approved these bids a while, yeah. so, so yeah. we and kind of agreed to what the numbers were. The shop yeah. at it, and they just kind of walked away yeah. from it, or not interested in it, because I even offered it at, they could do, you know, 2,000 yards if they wanted it. Before Martin leaves, do you want to talk about the overages on the trucks and make this reserve? Yeah, we can figure that out. Okay. Um, so just before we move forward, though, so certainly contact Barrett's and then whenever you you know go with what you need to do there, we need to get that pit filled yeah. up. Yeah. Um, Sherilyn has. This is something you need, uh, the expenses on the trucks. Um, and so we know we don't have budgeted money, but we have money in maintenance reserve. Okay. Um, so I just want your input as to are these charges chargeable? I mean, that first one, it seems like, again, we're paying a lot for that truck that had two heads go. Um, um, yeah, this is. I'm assuming this is a 2018 shot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, 2018. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, um, I think this is worth a call. So we, we discussed Sean's truck and we got it back uh, this morning actually. And so he's got his winter tires off, he's got the plow frame off, uh, giving a good wash because it literally went before, you know. We had a chance to go through it for yeah. spring maintenance. So he's going to go through it and then he's going to drive it. He's going to do some hauling and make sure that everything's going to hold up. Um, my personal opinion is the first EGR cooler, which is what this is, I believe. Yeah, that 5,000. Yeah, 38 or something. I don't believe it was the EGR cooler. Right. Ever. I think it was the head, but I don't know how you prove that. It may be worth. Um, the select board sending a letter to Oregon. I have reached out to the Navistar regional rep again um, and I have not heard back from him this time. The last time I spoke to him was when Sean's truck was there. It was towed in, broken, um, and they wouldn't even put it in the bay to work on it until we agreed to pay for it. And I was like, that, what difference does it make? The truck has to be fixed. It's sitting in your yard, fix it. And we'll argue about who pays for it after the fact. And they wouldn't do anything. They were gonna make me sign a letter of intent to pay. And then I reached out to the regional rep and then all of a sudden everything, and it wasn't gonna be under, possibly wasn't under warranty either. And then contacted the regional rep and then all of a sudden it was in the bay being worked on and under warranty and whatnot. So this was the first EGR cooler. I don't know. It can't, like you've said, and I certainly contact that rep because they seem to be yeah. with you um, yeah. when these guys are just wanting to charge it. I mean, there's no way that that thing could go like that. I mean, I can't believe it was the head. This, this original EGR cooler that we, they want us to pay for isn't even the one in the truck. It went again, and they put and they another put it going one in on top of there, right? And they're gone. So, right with the, with the head gone. With the head gone. So the head is causing those EGR, EGR coolers to fail. Yeah, I'm, but I'm not a mechanic, and I don't. But I think it might be worth drafting a letter Let's, to the region. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you just first talk to the rep, and then we will, um, depending on what he says, if we have to speak with him as well, or ask him to come in and talk with us. Yeah. Or get on a Zoom and see about. Uh, yeah, so it's obviously this is it, you know eat all of or some of these. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe we honestly should have to pay the tow bill to get it up there either. You know, it was none of that. No, right. it should all be under warranty. Yeah. Work with it. And that's um, not even on there. No, and that's not even on there. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure. At this point, we're holding all funds to them until we get this. So, like, or Sasha's holding yeah. the check. Yeah. Fleet. And this would be up to Allegiance. Okay. Are you good with this one? 
Yeah. So in case, anyways, we would, uh, we would have maintenance reserve fund money. So if we run into a situation right. so we're not killing everything, we can't pay for stuff. But okay. if it's, um, yeah. we need to make sure it's legitimate charges. This is the 2021. So all the ones that are highlighted add up to this figure right here. Okay. And that was another question for the board if they wanted to take money out of those funds because there was no money put into the budget. There were a little bit, but not enough to cover this, right? No, there was nothing put into the budget. No, not this year. I definitely, I think. Budget is zero. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm pretty sure I did put some in there, though. Um, so. Sorry, Doug. Keep you keep me up. Yeah, I, it's hard for me to know without. Did you know the vendors? Like, I think the thirteen twenty two recently. Right, okay, this is all right. Mm -hmm. So, it's all right. okay, so this is um, a plow blade and wing blade, the 775. So, it's basically wear items, but the wear items was going through the roof. This 1321 was a valve in its hydraulic body um, that stuck open, so it wasn't getting any hydraulic pressure to run anything. They claimed it wasn't under warranty. Uh, I mean, it's just one of those things. Is that from the same folks? That's from Viking. That's from Viking. 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 Yeah. So, so, so my question was to the board was, do we want to take because it's over, it's twenty three over twenty three hundred dollars? Do we want to move some of those maintenance reserve funds over? Sure. I think we have. Um, we can as a, as a board can spend up to five thousand out of the maintenance reserve without voter approval, and I think um, based on. The, what we're running into, I think it's probably a good idea to pay this bill out of that fund. Um, for the 2021? The 21, the $2,399. Okay, okay, so that's a, four different bills, but if you make a motion, it would be this figure that we would transfer. All right. Um, well, I'd move to transfer uh, $2,359.77 to the maintenance reserve fund into a general account to pay for um, work on the um, 20, 2021 Viking uh, setup, plow, plow frame, and such. Second. Thank you, John. Any <laughs> further discussion on that? Callie, Robin? No, nothing. All in favor, vote aye. 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 There you go. Um, anything else, Cheryl? I can't do that without. Yeah, that's why I need you to go over that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all I've got. Um, I don't think there's anything else. I was trying to think if we had anything. How's the pain? Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. That was uh, good. I, I driven it, you know, I didn't get out and walk in and expect every inch of it, but I believe it's good. I'm not sure if they've got the shoulders done or had as of. This morning we did not. No, so. no, which is unfortunate. Uh, that one resident off of Hog Hollow has a pretty nasty transition. Um, a little disappointed they didn't do a little better job there. But, a couple of uh, Yeah. Um, but no, it looks like a very neat, clean job. As much as I know about paving. That's a pipe design so, job. In yeah. Area. It was not much yeah. better than them, but that. that's so, what they do. Um, are you aware we did get a full grant for the Village Hill to repay them? We just got another project. Yeah, it's been oh, for approval. Yeah. Yeah, Sh Cheryl just got that. Um, so we can mm -hmm. do that. And I know there's, there was a... Uh, Don't do it yet, though. No, I would, I would hold off on that as long as we possibly can. Yeah. We have to next year, I believe. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 it's been put in for approval. We just don't have the actual grant agreement, so we can't do anything anymore until we Because it's not, like, terrible. It's just I didn't want to do, miss out on crack ceiling and stuff like that if it was, you know, so is that just like a taco? No, it's a whole thing. Like, grinding and... 60, yeah, they gave us a quote, pay, uh, pipe for 60 grand to do that. Thanks. All right. 
so we can figure that out. And maybe it's next year that we do that. Yeah, no, um, I, don't know. I mean, I would say it doesn't need it right this second, but okay, she I was surprised. Yeah. I didn't think we were going to get it. No, that was a class two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we were lucky on that because they even said, well, maybe you want to go for, you know, partial fix to it. Right, right. right. No, it's kind of what I was looking and at. We decided to go for it and okay. see if it'll be painted. And it'll be a little bit more with the, uh, the, 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 um, the mat, or it's not a match, but how much do we need to put onto that? 20%. 20%. But it's the whole thing being repaved, yeah. and grinded, yeah. and paved. So I think that's so fun. Huh? It'll be uh, well with it. Okay. Um, and I guess that's that's it, Martin. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, Martin. Uh, the guys, we said thanks. Mm -hmm. um, good luck in the summer. When are you guys going to start culvert work? Um, Let's see. We have. Uh, the sign is um, move the, the sign movement from the fire station to the front of the shop is scheduled for Wednesday of this week. Uh, and then, so there wasn't a lot of sense of moving the excavator away to bring it back in, but we'll be starting this, this week or early next can, week. Can residents request fill back Yes, yes. Okay. And just call you and request yes, back fill exactly, from yeah, you? Exactly. All right. Yeah. I'll be requesting some back fill from you then. Okay. It's not Perfect. a violation of my, uh, yeah. I know. Right. You lose all. <laughs> What's that? No, you lose all benefits once you become a Because yeah. yeah. you're pointing out, what are you taking town? Next thing you know, we, people will be telling us you're going to yeah. crushed gravel dumps. <laughs> yeah. 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 I got crushed gravel dumps. Yeah. I, just, I just had a, a tandem yeah. truck yeah. dumped in my yard. Fortunately, well, he didn't really put it in the right spot, so my yeah, excavator guy yeah. barely could get it. I don't know how he's going to get his excavator out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Martin. Cheryl, do you have other support? <laughs> I'm good. Are you good? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, yeah, because the other, we can do Oh, you know what? I do have one question. Sorry, Ben. Yeah. Um, I got it almost wet. Sorry. Shall we do you have another one of those tax rate sheets that we made? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, here it is in this. So because we have, um, yeah, so you can mind staying around here for just a couple more minutes. Um, we have a vote coming up on the grader. Yep. And I think I mentioned last time, I was What's asking, shh, 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 What's that? When's that? Well, the end of the 20th, the 27th. <laughs> I honestly can tell you, I do not think it's a good idea to wait until the 27th. There's too many people. They're going to be gone and away on vacation. Mm. Fourth of July is the next week. School gets out on the 17th. Yeah. No, not for more time, it doesn't. Harwood yeah. gets out on the 15th. Yeah, yeah. more time gets out on that Monday. Okay. So when do you think we should do it? Uh, as, soon as, the, as soon as you can, because people are going to be taken off. And it's already a bad time to be doing a vote anyway for people to really vote. All right, so we need to do it within like 30 and 40 days, right? Sounds good. All right, so we can talk about that okay. later as we get out of here. So during that, that voting time, we can also ask um, voters if we want to take any money out of the savings reserve. Okay. Um, and so I had Cheryl and do up uh, when, we, when we do our tax rate worksheet. And at this point, I don't really see that. And we can go over it later. But Cheryl and my question to you, and then I'll explain to these guys, we had last year's deficit at 44,171. Mm -hmm. Wasn't most of that under receivable? That we, no, you guys voted to move the ARPA funds over to cut the deficit. That's why it's not showing up there. That's why it's highlighted up top. In 2022? No, for this year. Oh, for At the end year? of last year, we had oh, a deficit sorry. of 44,171. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, I think most of it was 
Um, actually, it was uh, kind of a receivable. There were uh, funds on. That was even after our receivables. It's still, we still had a deficit of forty-four thousand. No, I understand that, but then we had, but coming into this year, there was money that was to be reimbursed. Which we haven't received yet. We haven't received it. When are we supposed to receive it? It, we, it comes in throughout the whole entire year. Like with the west side sidewalk, we haven't received any funds for them because we haven't been being built. Right. Um, so 33,558 uh, were grant funds that we expect to get in the first quarter of this year. Is this in your select report? Yeah. And what were your $33,000 based off of? I was based on the um, the information that I got from you. I don't, I don't have it right in front of me, so. Yeah, so that was because I was asking about the forty-four thousand, <laughs> and we were trying to figure out, mm -hmm. all right, we're going to be where's our misstep in this forty-four thousand dollars? And it really wasn't a misstep; it was just that we hadn't been reimbursed thirty-three thousand dollars worth of grants. Mm -hmm. So I look at that here, and we're we're putting that into the. Um, a scenario for our, to be reimbursed for the, the deficit mm -hmm. on the worksheet, but we're going to get thirty-three thousand of that back, anyways. I brought that up to the two different auditors, and they have always told me to have it always rolled into the tax but rate. But the auditors don't pay our bills. No, I yeah. mean you guys can do whatever you want. I'm just telling you what they say. I mean, if we, we're getting the money back. I mean, it's money that we didn't get last year. It shows up as a deficit, but we're getting it back through grant funds. I mean, that was thirty-three thousand. That's why I asked you the question. It. I don't know why we were kind of double dipping on it. It's totally up to you guys, but it's not what's recommended through any auditor. Why? Because you. Somebody can tell you they're going to give you ten thousand dollars in one year and what if it doesn't come in until January 1st of the following year. That's their point. Well, we need to, well, we need to chase it down and make them, you know, if we've got, if we've executed the grants and we've paid out that money, that tells me that we're in, that we should be reimbursed for. Yeah, I'm going to have to look at your $33,000 to see where the, which, which pieces those are coming in on that. Right. But, I mean, like I said, I mean, that's, Going up from what they're telling Sure. Us. No, I just, you know, and it's more I'm discussing it to the board mm -hmm. to see what you guys think. Um, I just don't think, it, to me, it always has seemed wrong that on those type of things that we're getting reimbursed and it shows, it's like Martin always talks about it with his budget, mm -hmm. you know, and he doesn't see the, the, the um, uh, credits. And so it, it's kind of like with our budget, but we know we're getting 33000 from that forty. Four thousand. So I guess I just don't see that. Uh, but we don't need to um, figure that out tonight. But just if everyone could kind of think about that. Um, okay. <clears throat> otherwise, if we use um, no ARPA funds at all, our tax rate is going to be roughly um, five uh, fifty-nine cents where we were at 51 last year. Um, just municipal. Just, just the municipal, right. The, the, the um, school tax rate, we don't know, but we do know it's going to go up. Mm -hmm. um, so we could use some of the uh, savings reserve funds or ARPA funds to bring that down. Um, but if we were to, Sherilyn, if that 44, when it's at twenty thousand per, or twenty-two thousand per one hundred, is that the coming sense? One hundred per one hundred. It's one hundred one hundred per one hundred thousand. That's this forty-four thousand dollars isn't going to make a big difference on the tax rate. Right. Because if you look at it in the first scenario. Actually, it's, it's in both of them. So scenario one and scenario two, it's literally two cents. All right, well, that's actually the question I was asking. Yeah. So that's two cents, so we would be um, six cents over if 
if we decided to not don't it, if you will, um, my words. Um, or we could also, ARPA funds, we could bring in ARPA funds as well, but we know we're pretty tight with where, with what we're at at that. Um, or do we want to do savings reserve funds? Right. So you're just saying the 44, don't claim it as a $44,000 deficit, <laughs> claim it as a $10,000 deficit? Basically 12,000, yeah. Okay. And basically assume that the grants are coming in. And right. And that's, as Charles said, that's two cents on the uh, on tax the total rate. Total tax rate. Okay. For that 59. So it's somewhat insignificant. Yeah, so uh, let's okay. think about that. But Cheryl, so thanks. I don't think there's anything else. But, um, okay. and then we'll, we'll try to figure this out. Um, and we'll also try to figure a, uh, a, a date. Um, we don't need to figure this out tonight, but we, if we can figure out a date for the vote. Um, well, it pretty much has to be the 20th. Mm -hmm. Sasha, do you have that information that I gave you on the dates? Will we even have the bid, days? though, by then to vote on mm -hmm. for the greater to ask how much we're going to ask for, or is it just some? Well, we can do up, up to random, up to, yeah, up, up to, to, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Up to, okay, that's, that's fine, yeah. So then I agree with Sherilyn, I would say, get it done sooner. Yeah, maybe we don't have to set it tonight then because we're, we're right. running out of time. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're, what are we to, we're going to add up. 30 days, Thirty brings us to basically the uh bring us to the twenty sixth. Anyways? No. Because we're at the fifteen. Thirty days is gonna bring us to the twenty seventh. Twenty first? Twenty first. Uh, to the no, 14th. 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 Yeah, I went through and I counted it. I was like, wait yeah. a minute. Yeah, to the 14th. Yeah. So, uh, I think it's the week to the 20th. Yeah, and I don't think we have. I can't find it on your desk. So, yeah, we would do, we could do the. Um, 14, and if we know exactly whether we want to take any money or not for the savings reserve, we have to make that decision tonight as well. So, um, we have savings reserve. Cheryl, did you have that right question? I'm sorry, do I what? Savings reserve right at the top of your head? The, the amount that's in there? Yeah. 994. Roughly, give or take. 994,000. And what are you saying you want? What amount are you thinking of taking? I really have not um, thought about that. We know. Uh, Thank you, Sasha. 80,000 is going to be roughly 4 cents. Um, I don't really know if it makes sense to. What do you think, Kelly? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Two cents is not a big deal. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm thinking we have in the next year the expenses that we have coming up. I think that might be where we want to. To spend, to spend some of that on, yeah. 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 yeah, kind of in a lull. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. I think we should just bite the bullet and yeah, just keep it the way. Just it keep is. it the way it is, and yeah. just say hey, that's just the way it is. I mean, you know, I think we'll if Cheryl. I don't think people are going to go crazy, but if you can just look into that thirty-two thousand, Cheryl. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I'm gonna, I don't want to tell you something or not. Right, so. and just let us know on mm -hmm. that. We don't have to. 
We're not setting this time anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, or it'll be a couple of months before we do that. But I was just wanted to look at something preliminary uh, to see if it was something that we should do. Um, and I don't think so. So. I mean, I would, for the same as reserve, I was thinking more for something like a larger expense anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but. To knock off thirty grand, or yeah, I mean, you know. you're just going to eat it away, not really get much. Right, yeah, I mean, like right. piss it away, right? You know, I know how that works. <laughs> yeah, so it's only it's only forty grand, and then you you know you get to the well a few times. Yeah, right. we'll save that one. We really got something you're serious. Really <laughs> exactly. All right. It sounds like you're going to have something coming up. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in, Cheryl. I understand. I know you've been working all day. Did you set a date or no for the result? We said the 14th. Did we think that would work? Okay. Yeah. Of June? So June 4th, that? That's as long as okay, Sasha so can do the. Doesn't have to be on a Tuesday then. Okay, so as far. No. Any time, okay. So as far as getting the wording for the warning, it's just for the greater. Just for the greater. Just so for the greater. I just need the actual figure to make that happen. Right. Well, I think. Um, Four hundred ten thousand should do it. Not yeah. to exceed. Not, not to exceed. exceed. Okay. Is that how you want me to do yeah. it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. And if we're only going to have that one article, I'm not going to run it through the tabulator and spend that money. If you guys are okay with that, it's going to take longer on our end at night. But if I can maybe get some help counting. I don't think we're not going to get, I'm guessing maybe 200 people. Oh, right, it's right. If you've got to run into the tabulator for a couple hundred people that show up. I don't think it's worth spending the extra money programming the, program the tabulator. And how much is that? It, it could be 750 it could be $1,000. And then okay. you got to have your art, your ballots done. Yeah, and, and just all that. Put it on yeah. Paper. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can just print it on. Like, yeah, <laughs> I just honestly, <laughs> right, I don't know. It's okay. easier for me to have a room for the tabulator. Yeah, yeah, secure, yeah. But I don't. Yeah. Oh, I really just. Oh, don't worry. Financially, it's it's wise. Well, I'll have Steve yeah. McGill watching your house. All right. That'll All right, that so makes you feel a lot better. So six fourteen, and we'll have the poll from seven to seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. And any of you who want to come in and count, I welcome. We'll have a so we'll. we'll uh, Cross straws for that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's really not going to take long. It's I will love it. But I mean, and Steve, I'm sure Steve will be here and he's gone. It's usually right? a lot of fun with you ladies, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll even get you pizza. All right. Okay. Pizza and beer. All right. So seven fourteen seven to seven. That. That's good? fine. It is what it is. Okay. We're the funniest. All right. All right. Doug Reed, been here all night, longer than most of us. You should pay more money to what? You should get paid more money. Oh, yeah. We actually gave ourselves a... Uh, oh, when, do, when, do, when do we actually get year. paid? My wife keeps asking me. When, when, when do we, do we do actually... Do we? Yeah, do we actually... I just need to remember. Yeah, okay. it's usually like first of the year, November. Right after we after we get our tax money stretch rolling in, and all the big money, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, we no so much of dream. I think my wife would get to it. So I was going to talk about the drawing I dropped off. Yeah. I think Donnie took it. So I'm going to, did, yeah. I think I'm going to describe it, which is easy to do. But I guess a couple of things I talked about. Mm -hmm. So I talked to Bill Reedy, who was the education secretary, because I was trying to get the get car union to give back the 70000 that yep. was supposed to be. Yep. And he said, you know, once we get rid of the school district, we don't have a Moortown school district. So who owns the land? Because the name on the deed says town and school. So all the Benedict Farms says town and school. Well, he thinks you should deal with that. You want to make it in the town. You don't want Howard Union saying they've got any rights to our parking lot or anything. I believe you said no. the lease goes to the sh the sh the. the Let's have the a lawyer look at it because it says on the deed. We already did. Paul Gillis. He's on found. He's on found. Found out that it was. Just just town. All I know is that I looked at the deed the other day and looked up in the books and it says school there. It's one of the, you know, when they sold the Benedict Farm to the town from the Northfield Savings Bank, it says the word school. Just make sure that's... It it's going to happen. But we, yeah, we recently when, uh, when we were doing the, the grants for this building here, um, and we signed, or the, the school, Howard signed off on, on it, 
They shouldn't. Yeah. They shouldn't have any. They have no rights here. Yeah, that's what Bill was saying. That well, he's that was did this, by the way. He's the one who got rid of all the local boards and made a big board. And now I asked him the other day, and he said, "Well, you don't have, you know, you don't have a school board, so you don't." And they have no. Uh, the only land they own is, is the drip line, you know. Even the drip they line. don't own that either. The town owns that. Yeah. So you need to make sure that. So because we're talking about fixing that parking lot, the parking lots, they can't own that. No, they have, they, we own that. Yeah, yeah but there's, there's, we'll make sure. We did, the, we did the intermodal grant. They did the drive a uh, bus loop and the next hunk of that. It's got to be more time. So the way it's, it's from what Bill was saying, Bill was an education lawyer for 30 years. You know, he's the guy. He's the most president. Yeah. So he's unsure of it. So we should be sure of that, that anything we do here is more time. Yep. Uh, there's no harm trying to get rid of this, right? When they're re redistributing the schools, they're going to want to get rid of more time. Yeah. Well, does, that mean they get to, does that mean they get to sell our school because they can it? Right. Anyways, I just I'm a little worried about that. <laughs> just yeah. from what he said, I was kind of surprised he said it. When you go ask him, like, I don't well, agree. I don't mean, disagree anyways, with him. But so that's as far as the regional planning commission, I didn't realize it was a hunk of money. But this intermodal grant, which is not here to talk about the parking, um, they were. It, I was the chairman, so I, that's why I knew about the grant. And the school did it. I did the paperwork, and you guys, well, John back then, signed on to it, so responsible. And we were supposed to provide X number of parking spaces. And over the time, you know, we put a gate up, we built some, the school built some stuff, we claimed some parking spaces. We don't have the spaces we have. So my idea was to create a, a drawing that gives doubles the parking and doesn't increase the paving. So in the paving project, we don't spend any more for the paving, but we get twice as much parking. And then we meet the requirements of the federal grant, not that. You know, the person, there was a state lady who uh, was part of it, so, and it's pretty straightforward, I and mean, I can show you a map, but all I did is took Google Maps and put some lines on it. Yeah. So I can just describe it right here if it's okay. Sure. Right. Oh, so I made a little loop right there at the corner of Eugene's land. I made a little grass bump there so that they could turn right there. Okay. If we get rid of that bump, then the drive aisle can come straight in. It was way back when we did the drive aisle, <laughs> 30 years ago. So it's 24 feet wide. When you do that, you move the drive aisle over, it gives you another 20 feet of parking. So we could do parking from the old town offices all the way up to the mailbox. That's 20 spaces. And all you're doing is that you're allowed to take, we're in the floodplain, so the reason this building's here is because they took the, the Benedict Farm Foundation and put it here, which you can do because that land was already part of the floodplain. So you can move it from one part of the floodplain to the other part. To the other, yeah. That's why we're sitting here. The same thing when they do this work here. That parking is in the floodplain, so you can move a little bit here, and you're not meeting or not hurting any regulations. So when they get rid of bad material and the Craig stuff that he did is great, the school stuff is not great. Craig said, you know, there's mud underneath that paving over on that side. So as you get rid of bad stuff, if we just put it along this edge here, that's 20 spaces. It's not going to be. It'll be from existing equipment, and because the idea is to get rid of the bus loop, which has no parking, right? And the bus loop is never, once they went and removed their machines on that and made it pump, that thing is going to heave forever. No matter how many times you fix it, it's just going to heave. And then it's a tripping hazard. It's a, it's a lawsuit waiting to happen, right? That's supposed to be a handicap access. Yeah, it's not. I mean, look at the, those curbs and all that stuff. So if we just get rid of that, that becomes a, a uh, we can tramp on a couple of trays, and it becomes a little park there with some picnic tables and the kids can eat outside. I just loop. The whole loop just goes away. That hunk of paving, which we, it's not going to support paving because it wasn't ever properly done. You can move that on material over here, then they have 20 parking spaces here. And then the other thing that happened is, if we put a, park, a line of parking next to Eugene's hedge, that would be one line, that's about 24, pace, 24 spaces. Then a double line, and then another drive out, and then a single line. All we're doing is taking about four to six feet off of the grass and around the, the hump there. And when they're doing their excavation work, that's, that's nothing, right? So just pick it up, and then you get, so it's basically 24, or 20 feet for a parking, 24 for an aisle, 20 feet parking, 20 feet parking, 24 for an aisle, and 20 feet for parking. And when you do that, you get four rows of parking, plus the 20 here, that's 100. Mm -hmm. So we double it, and it doesn't cost any more because you're already gonna do the, the drainage. It doesn't change the drainage at all, and then, because it'll still drain the same direction. And then you'll, it won't increase the amount of paving because you're no longer going to pay the bus loop. The only thing that the school, going back to the school, they're not going to have their buses enter to the far ex exit. They're going to enter 
that they're going to dump off at the middle entrance, mm -hmm. which is actually better because there's through the wall ventilation on the school now. When the buses are anywhere near it, the ventilation goes into the, <laughs> the classroom. Right. Not a good idea. And the kids, and so now they, they closed off the vents, so the kids are going to get fresh air in the classroom. Anyways, it's a bad situation. We're making it better. And we're not hurting the drainage at all. In fact, probably helping the drainage because it gets rid of those little hunks of, of uh, those couple of trees, two and two, they go away. Mm -hmm. So all the paving will just go all the way here. So we, when you go to pl um, plow it, straight shot. Just go all the way from the school and push it all the way over the edge. So there's no more little islands there to go around. And the drain will drain better. And uh, should be the same amount of paving. So that's the drawing. I'm, I'm putting it here, but it's really, <laughs> yeah. there it is. So we're still going to come in the buses? The, the buses come in here, but when they, after they drop off at the middle entrance, they're completely out of the way, right? The rest of the people come in here and go into two drive aisles. Right. Two drive aisles. Uh, they're going to still enter on that south drive. Not all the way to the end. Yes, they're entering the south drive. So my so concern is just stopping in the middle, uh, not dropping at the main entrance. And they're right, they're dropping at the middle entrance, but does that hold cars and buses out into Not as long as if we make this this here have two drive aisles here. Right? Right. So we're gonna come in here and have two drive aisles parking on both sides. And then people can come in and park and loop around and go out so they'll everybody uses this as the main, as the main, entrance. main entrance only the buses use the, the only other buses entrance. there and the buses right. are way over there so they're not in the way right so you can when you go through the double through the aisles you go around there and not be in problem so no because i i couldn't follow that on the, the drawing I went I, the, sorry the parents the, 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 yeah it was like a circle so the parents come in the parents come in here and they have two aisles they can go down they can park in either one where they go all the way around the park, and then there's another chunk of parking where next to the old right. entrance, where there would be the visitor and handicap parking would be there. Okay. When you add it all up, it's 100 spaces, and it ain't any more paving. Right. So I think it makes sense, and it makes a lot of sense if you put some EV parking and they pay for it out of the grant. Right. Why not? It's because the Regional Planning Commission, when we're on there, they were very, one of our jobs was to make sure you had places where people could drop off to park and not drag the cars around with global warming and all that. Right. This is it. This is a intermodal now, parking. Is there already a sign that says like buses only on that entrance? Or could no, I think that's something, so we would, something we would add in, yeah. right? Buses only and then... You know, it would be different for them, but there's no, I mean, there's, that corner back there is never going to get solved. And it, if we repay it, you're just going to repay it again. Mm. Right. Yeah, I've heard a lot of complaints about that. And, yeah. and the parking spaces won't interfere with any of the gravel wetlands or anything like that? No, because we're all, well, just like I said before, that we already have a floodplain. Yeah. And all we're doing here is just basically taking some of this gravel here that we don't want as a sub base and moving it to the edge right, right here. The only thing that uh, Sherilyn was saying, the transclosure there, I haven't put the transclosure there to get the power closer to the, I have to admit this, closer to the uh, amphitheater site. Uh, right. Sorry. Right. But anyways, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. but that could be, you know, they have a right away there, but, and if they are worried about plowing, this won't change anything. You're still plowing the same direction. Mm -hmm. You play maybe plow more snow, but you could, we could extend the, the primary line to the school and just give them a, a right away from there up to here. I mean, they're gonna dig that hole, dig it to get it in there anyways. So that was the map, that was the drawing. I told um, Dr. Mike that I was going to meet with you. I didn't send him the drawing because I thought you should have it first because I didn't want him to own it. But I want them to know that this is the situation. I was trying to get them to accept that the 70 Rand got moved, but uh, Bill Reedy said, once they moved it, if you didn't catch them the first year, it's gone. So I can't prove it now because Irene came and all the records are gone. So I, I'll never get that money from them. Well, I think, um, so we're doing the drainage this summer, starting with, actually, shortly. Starting, yeah, June 15th. June yeah. 15th, and um, we're doing the parking lots next next spring. So the parking, as far as the drainage, would have this, that drawing I did, it has no effect on that at all. Because yeah. um, they yeah. didn't do anything in the far corner. Right, and our guys are doing the, the, the parking lot, or are tearing it up, so. Next summer. Next summer. Next mm -hmm. summer. Yeah. But so when they come here, when they're digging this trench, they're going to dig this down two, three feet here. So I made that little dip there, which is all my fault. I mean, it's going to even be a bigger dip now, the vertical drive. It's, it's a, a bit of a hump. Because they're trying to get enough drainage on, on the paper. Oh, it is. So people complain, you can see muffler marks here with it. It's, <laughs> it's going to be worse. Yeah. 
So, anyways, um, but what we're what I drew doesn't change any of that. Um, I think it's a little overkill what they drew. But someone wants to pay for it, fine. Um, so we're just talking about grabbing a little chunk, taking a little hunk of dirt there, and getting rid of the. It's not even paving anymore. <laughs> it's just dirt over there, and using it where it'll give us. And so the buses, if they're not the. They come in, they, they come, and they, there's a line of parking right here. Yep. And then there's a 24-foot wide dry valve, just like at Harwood, and they make the turn. So they, and then they go out. Well, there's enough room for them to make that. Yeah, 20, turn. 20, you need the, they have an aisle, and then they have 24 foot, four foot wide. We need to make it wide if you want. But 24 is normal. Like right. Super. You could always make the center aisle a little yeah, We've got enough radius center. there. Right. So the, the, the key is the radius, and there'd be a radius in here, too. So we wouldn't park all of it to the edge. We'd give them a little radius for the. For the right. But it keeps them out of the way of the family and the kids don't ever cross the bus system, right? So my thinking is that you should have the teachers park over there because they, you know, they get them there. And then the, the uh, parents are over here away from the buses. So it's better than what's there now. Yeah, that's my only concern is that if the buses are exiting down the center aisle, people but it's going to be a side, it'll be a side aisle. You know, they only, you know, they don't go that often. The hard thing, and the, I did the plan for a Waitsfield. And as soon as they park the bus, they bring out the signs that are blinking, you can't pass the bus, just so everything stops. That's true. But if you have them park over next to the church there, fine. Yeah. Park as long as you want. And when you finally leave, you're just leaving once. So meanwhile, you know, the parents get moved in and out. So I think it works. I noticed I was seeing some parents are coming in that direction behind the bus. They've got to wait for the bus. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah, no. So anyways, it meets the uh, intermodal grant. Which I'm a little worried. I mean, you guys signed on to it. I signed on to it. You donated. We got in-kind donation. I think like thirty thousand dollars or something of our in-kind, but the town equipment to do the lot. And now that we really, people took away the parking lots, and that was not part of the parking spaces. That's not part of the rent. So this solves that and doubles our parking, which is great for town meeting and everything else. Okay, I think it's something. Um we will continue to, to look at and when we make those decisions I don't know you know we'll have some other people look at it as well I mean the guy who did the drawing it's a very good drawing by the way for, for the whole park and stuff mine was just from Google Maps so I just blow it up in there I had to stick. they can do it uh, they can just take my new drawing and just draw it it'll take seconds yeah, it won't take long, long at all mm -hmm. and it doesn't change their 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 manholes and anything like that the catch basins sorry yeah we'll, we'll look at that and if it makes sense then uh, I would uh, certainly go along with it. I, I know there's been issues with this drive around and they're not happy with it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Um, so, <laughs> well, at least you're taking the ownership of it. You know? <laughs> Most people wouldn't do that. Well, I put it there in the first place thinking that it would be a way to get to the amphitheater and also to be a parking lot. But really, if you think about that, I should have had it back at the meeting. Well, it was more efficient. Because in hindsight, it's 2020. Right? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, that's the, all I had. Um, um, I'm still hoping, I was reading the Valley Reporter, that all the decisions had to be made on the PARPA money. I hope there is something for amphitheaters because I can't really get grants unless they have matching. So and the school just gave me the uh, thank you very much for the thank you letter. Yeah. Um, so my only source for the, the grant matching part is if uh, people be, believe here. Uh, Field is a good investment for the town. Right. So hopefully I'm giving you enough help on the, the uh, grading the town funds here as far as for parking, but there's, you should save some money on this. All right, and we also, with the school, we have a, um, an agreement with them. If there's something that we decide, um, we have a memorandum of uh, understanding with them, and that's something that we could bring up as the board, is that is maybe ask them for some money to help out. And they might be a little bit more um, receptive to it. Yeah, I, I, Cheryl Lynn said, you know, they never, they didn't go to their their person to check out the money. They never talked to Cheryl Lynn. They just wrote a letter saying, ha, yeah. ha, ha, sorry. Uh, I don't think they probably put much effort into it. But um, as we further develop the the, uh, the project and get more buy-in from everyone, and we'll, you know, just, I'll talk to the people that are actually at the school. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the people in the, in the, the office. What do you think of this plan? You know, you watch the kids, you know what's going on. What do you think? Well, I'm double that. It just kind of goes back to the who owns the land stuff. 
I just really don't want Howard Union to think they own Right, or they don't have a decision in it. And they're right. I it would be nice to get their input. Yes, I told them about it as I was going to meet with you. And then if you'd like, give me the rough drawing I had, or if you're the people who are doing the, the real drawings you want to just lay it out. It's just a couple of lines, basically. You know, yeah, we'll probably have the, or like the engineers lay it out. Okay, because that's all. You know, we didn't, we did, actually, when we did this originally, we didn't have an engineering problem, so it's pretty much Craig when <laughs> It's probably really all you need, but... Um, and that, and the only reason I say this, because when they, we, we split this into two parts. The bus loop was done by the school, but, and then the re, and the part from here over was done by the town. We're getting rid of their school stuff, but if the school no longer really exists, it's now the town that owns all this, including yeah. the school. That goes back to that question of who owns what. Mm -hmm. so, thanks. All right, thanks. Hey, thank you, Doug. I appreciate thanks. taking the time. All your efforts. Let's see what time we got going on. Clarky, we got you late. So, Clarky is here to give us a wastewater update. Late Monday evening. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, well, the wastewater committee has continued to meet routinely. Um, we've reported on site negotiations that we've been having around the town and around the village, and that to a certain extent is ongoing. Um, uh, we've uh, uh, re approached, or I don't know if we've actually done it yet, but we're planning on re approaching Sharon regarding the property up on the more time common road right up near the where the substation is for GMB mm -hmm. that meadow there. Um, the uh, Upper Valley Services is fine. Um, town and school given permission to dig up here um, by the right. by the site um, of the treatment uh, area and the Stevensons uh, have also indicated that there's some uh, parts of their property that that were uh, that they're okay with digging test pits in. So. Um, the test pits um, haven't started yet because um, one of the, the real nuts that we have not cracked yet is um, the submission of the Clean Water State Revolving Fund loan application. And the delay there has been uh, be, um, that the discussions and the issues that haven't been solved yet between Otter Creek Engineering and the State Clean Water Revolving Fund staff, that has been... Um, an ongoing issue for months uh, that hasn't um, um, finalized itself yet. We don't have a, a um, eng preliminary engineering report um, that the state has been willing to accept yet, not report, but um, um, an engineering um, plan from Otter Creek that the, that the state is willing to um, accept so that we can put the numbers from that into our application. And tomorrow afternoon, um, a representative from the Clean Water State Revolving Fund, as well as Otter Creek and Ray Washburn and myself are meeting with them, um, trying to cut the Gordian knot here <coughs> and get this resolved so that we can move on. Um, there's so a lot check me, pardon me, what the, what the problem is or what? Well, the problem has been that um, the there have been questions that the state has made to Otter Creek um, in order to clarify their their document and they have um, not provided adequate responses um, to those to those and it has been going on for a really long time about a month ago we had a meeting that um, to a certain extent it, um, kind of devolved into a um, fairly heated discussion between the state and Creek about uh, who needed to do what in order to move forward. And so the town is sort of in the middle of this because the, 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 the state and the engineering firm haven't been able to line up their ducks so that they agree on, um, on the numbers and also the scope of the work that they want to, that they want to do uh, for this project. And so we at, at the wastewater committee um, wanted to try to just, we've got to move on. We've got to get this finalized so that the application can be submitted and also know what we can do from here on in. Um, and we hope to be able to do that tomorrow. Um, 
you know, and, and try to figure this out. Is there going to be someone there from Otter Creek that has the ability to make decisions and get things done, or is it? Well, that's that's the that's one of the, the issues, Tom. Um, you know, we've kind of I think it's getting to the point now where things are fairly are still vague. Tomorrow, it's time for for somebody to to sort of stand on the table and you know stamp their feet and pound their fists because it's it's time for, for this to get resolved. Um, and right now it's a volunteer committee that's doing this and we've been kind of watching this back and forth between the state and Otter Creek for months now and it just hasn't been resolved. I think both parties to a certain extent have been uh, operating in, in good faith but uh, it's just been really slow and ponderous, much slower than we anticipated. And one of the, the crux of this is that in the money that's available through this loan application, which is you know, a 0% loan, uh, there's about $300,000 left for this year. And when that's allocated, the money's gone. Um, Otter Creek has probably invoiced us about twenty eight to $30,000 at this point, Sasha. A little, a little bit more than that. So they have done work and invoiced the town. Um, and those invoices uh, have been sent off to the state just so they'll know that these invoices are coming in. And, and they're, not also, they're not also invoicing properly in order for have the state to, to reimburse. So it's been kind of messy and uh, to a certain extent so, somewhat unprofessional as far as we can tell. And it's just really getting very tiresome at this point because uh, if things were lined up, we'd be digging test pits at this point and be able to really get a sense of what we might be able to have as a possible system. Um, and at this point, um, you know, we're still at loggerheads to a certain extent in terms of what's happening. So by saying this and by bringing this to the select board and bringing you up to speed on this, um, I, you know, it, it might be time for someone else other than people on this committee in order to have a discussion with Otter Creek, because that to me is really where the, the hang up is at this point. Um, and we really need to get this solved so that we can move on. Um, in order to, one of the first significant steps in this process is having a purchasing sales agreement or, um, uh, or a permanent easement signed by the end of this year. We don't have to, we don't necessarily have to pay a landowner at this point um, out of these funds, but we do need to be able to, to have some kind of document in place by the end of this year. And, and we're almost, you know, literally six months to go on this. And negotiating this with the property owners is not necessarily an easy task, you know, and that could yeah. be, obviously the, there are gonna be legal fees involved and, um, and those are not coming out of town funds, but nevertheless, the negotiation part and the time frame involved is, is uh, could be significant. Uh, and if the test pits prove to be inadequate, then we may also be at a particular point where we have to, to step away. But that's always been kind of a possibility until you actually get the, the test done and you don't know whether or not we're going to have adequate uh, soils in order to do this. But um, at this point, um, you know, I have gotten a, an agreement from the state um, to, if we want to, um, you know, we've had some discussion within the committee that if we pay Otter Creek now as a sign of good faith uh, from town funds, um, and which would be reimbursed, then you need to see the document in, that has basically guaranteed that. And um, I don't have that yet. And until obviously we get that, we're not going to pay out any money in order to, um, to move forward. But um, Otter Creek has not, um, they're not really holding that up as an obstacle at this point, but it was a possibility that we talked about that if we pay this money at this point, then it would be something that we could um, basically say, we know you, you've you know, put in staff time and professional time uh, in the work that you've done so far, so we're going to cover the invoices in the meantime and then wait for reimbursement later by the state. Um, but the way that the invoices have been done at this point, um, the state wouldn't reimburse because they're not done uh, with the kind of coding that they, that's required. And Otter Creek gets funds reimbursed from the state all the time. This is not something that's, you know, that they should be, you know, really scratching their heads about. They should be able to figure this out or call some money in order to make sure that the invoice looks proper mm -hmm. uh, in order to get, uh, to get reimbursed. Um, 
So that's the most significant issue at this point. Um, the other update I want to give you is that there. Um, so let, let me let's stop there. Yeah, sure. Um, so tomorrow you go and it just blows up. Yeah, you know, nothing I happens. Could I hope not? All right. Well, no, that's worst case scenario. Yeah. Um, we as a select board should at that point intervene um, and get involved and then reach out to to our group. Don't you agree? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think it's time for, you know, you know, I'm going to do a call and Tom and, you know, talk with the owner or the principal for Otter Creek and just say, you know, this is unacceptable. We need yeah, to move on. And if it looks like it's going to go that way tomorrow, um, I mean, that's, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to say that that's what was decided right. tonight. Right. But that's what's likely to occur in this right. point in order to kind of break through here. Because we, we've got to make some Yeah, so I just want to make sure the board's okay with that. If it, if, if, it's, if it goes south tomorrow and Clark reaches out to Sasha, Sasha will let the board know. At that point, I'll reach out to the principal or whoever is at Otta Creek um, just to get kind of a what's up. Yeah. Know, yeah. Maybe, you know. You know, we you know you don't have to threaten to withhold funds, but obviously we're not gonna you know if if the state's not reimbursing us, we're you know probably not gonna right. And we all we all know the yeah. importance of getting it done, and if it doesn't yeah. get done by the end of the year, you know we could all be out, and, and we're, we're not gonna pay any invoices yeah, if exactly. we get this grant yeah. because of them, because it's all based on the grant. So, so you know, um, and we don't want to, you know, but. All right, so that's yeah. square rules. Yeah, so that's that's the biggest issue right now. Um, the other thing that um, that I've been doing is looking for other supplemental funds for the project. Um, the um, the other one of the other pots to go to is what's called the Community Recovery and Revitalization Grant, and that's um, administered through the Agency of Commerce and Community Development. I've started to fill out the application. Um, it can't pay for preliminary. In, uh, it can't pay for in, um, engineering design of a system. Unfortunately, it has to actually pay for real things like equipment, time, pipes, okay. you know, supplies, hardware, supplies, sort of hardware. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, so that's just something that I'm going to put in, and you know, have it, and it can pay up to a million dollars or twenty percent of the project. So okay. It's not a big chunk of well, I guess a decent chunk of money, but it's not huge. Um, next year, we can also apply for Northern Borders. Um, Funding as well, um, and I always get the acronym for that right. Uh, Northern Borders Regional Commission, um, and I was I contacted them last week, and and we can apply for, for money for a project for next year as well. Um, the other thing that um, Waysville is doing, if you saw the the article, is that they they actually got um, a congressional earmark. Uh, from Bernie's office, and we can do that too. Um, so that's what I'm going to try to figure out is how to kind of go to the channels to figure that out as well. Earmarks are, are funky because they're not guaranteed, and mm -hmm. we read the article there. And, and earmarks are, you know, it's kind of, it, it, you know, fit, um, they, they used to be, you know, it's basically pork barrels. Pork, so, yeah. Know, <laughs> sending out to its, uh, representatives and senators for certain Saying, you know, and throw this in the thing. Yeah, and usually. Late night read or whatever. And, yeah. You have to have a hierarchy if, in order to get that, but um, there's no harm in asking. It's it's fairly routine for municipalities to do that. Um, so the other little wrinkle, this is the last thing I'll mention that we can check in about a couple of details, is that um, we were also told that um, it might be important to do water quality uh, sampling in the Mad River this summer um, because of the sort of to a certain extent, regardless of what sites are identified. Um, and so I reached out to the contact that I was given at the state just to confirm that, because it's another expense. It would be wrapped into the loan application. Um, but it's also another process that has to be scheduled. And as we all know, scheduling professionals these days and getting people available to do something is, is a huge deal. People are out straight, and it's just crazy time trying to get this. In fact, one of the biggest headaches with doing test pits is you have to have um, an archaeolo a consulting archaeologist on site before you even can, you know, put a shovel in the ground. Uh, so that's a requirement, and that's hard to, to find people that are that have the time in order to do that. Um, so anyway, the water quality study might not have to be done because I 
one of the things the Otter Creek engineer did do is he um, sent an email off to the contact in the state, and it looked like he convinced her that it might not be required, which would be great, because it's just one less step that would have to be done. Uh, that's something I want to confirm tomorrow as well, but that's off the table. Um, so, are, they, are the friends of the Mad River, aren't they usually? I sent a study that was done in 2015. Um, the dilemma is that the sampling did not include phosphorus and, and nitrates, which is obviously the big deal now with uh, the total, the TMDL with like Champlain. So that has to be checked out ahead of time. So, um, and, that, and what the friends collected was both, I think, E. coli. I think it was only E. coli. So it's not data that's, that the state can use. Yeah. So I'm sorry to report that it's a, gotten a bit more convoluted and less, um, you know, um, but it certainly, <clears throat> it sort of goes and fits and starts at this point. Um, and I'm pretty sure if the state is, you know, says that um, the preliminary engineering um, work that Otter Creek proposes is up to snuff, then I've got to jump on it and, and get the application in as soon as possible. And to a certain extent, it, it's just a matter of filling in, in the blanks. Lastly, the select board has to sign off on the loan application. Um, there are, um, it's right at the bottom of the form. I don't know whether this is an e-signing process, um, whether or not this is something that need, needs to be approved at official select board meeting. Um, that uh, I will determine tomorrow. Um, and then there has to be one other person named on the application other than me. So Tom, I was planning on putting you on there. Um, and it's basically another, um, it's, it's just a second point of contact um, for the loan application. Not that, not that I'm not signing or <laughs> co-signing the loan, am I? <laughs> yeah. you have a, is that a problem? <laughs> well, no, it's no, no. It's, right. Well, if that's the case, they put it me first because I'm the primary uh -huh. signer on here. So. Um, and I'm not planning on going anywhere, but um, anyway, I'll, uh, I'll double check in terms of exactly what that means and I'll let you know. Um, so, yeah, good question. Well, good. Um, thanks for the update, because we would, it would be nice to, to get that piece done so we can also let people in town, I'd like to get a feeling from the people in the village, you know, what, what they're thinking, what everyone is. So we, I've gone, we have gone back and forth on the committee because we wanted to do something in March or April. Um, and we had a discussion about, well, if we do this before we have the test fit data, then it becomes speculation. You know, once we have test fit data, then it becomes, you know, then we can, you can talk about specific solutions. And, and so I'm sort of second guessing myself at this point saying, yeah, we should have had that conversation anyway, just so that people could have a, you know, a voice at the table. Um, but, you know, as soon as we get the test fit data and has some sort of analysis, I'm hoping to have something, you know, do we have something in July? I'd like to think so, but it, it could be later than that. But we, we certainly want to have it as soon as possible. And if it looks like it might be delayed significantly, uh, you know, I'm at this point feeling to try to convince the committee to, to have it, and then we'll do our best to lay out the possibilities um, as much as we know. So, well, let Sasha know, or give me a call. Let Sasha know, regardless, but then give me a call. Just to yeah, I'll ask tomorrow specifically about what it means by signing up on that, and I'll ask about how the select board gets. Um, and obviously, you need to know kind of the, the specific ones they get down, so, so you can, you know, in good faith, sign the document and stuff. Because um, I don't want to have you do that unless you've seen it, obviously. Very good. Okay, great. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Clark. Thank you, Clark. Yeah, take a quick break while you the restroom. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Do some jumping jacks, maybe? Yeah. Kelly, yeah. yeah. looks like you're ready to fall asleep. Um, so, our dog got compost poisoning. Oh, really? That's mm -hmm. We got like two going on three weeks ago. So we took him to Bev's, because it was a Sunday, he had to go up. He wasn't getting any better, had to spend the Wednesday after going to Bev's at Roy's getting IVs. Came back, the next week checked on him, 
still wasn't doing any better. They thought it was his hips because he has hip dysplasia in both hips. And Roy's like, it's not his hips. But he would like all of a sudden just like yip and cry and freak out and like run to us. And now, so they put him on Dex, which is steroid and gabapentin. Yeah. So then it got to the point where he was fine during the day. But the minute he gets inside and goes downstairs to go to bed, he will like whine until you lay with him. Until you what? Lay with him. Really? Yeah. And then he lays down and goes to sleep and he's fine. And you have to lay with him for like 15, 20 minutes. Well, last night, so that basically. So, just so you know, that's like a toddler, right? So, this is, <laughs> you know, it's not going to be your whole thing here. This, you you got to get the whole experience. You know, you haven't. You have Someone you've taken in a little bit older, you haven't had this, so. Well, I had it when he was a puppy. <laughs> but so last night, the vet prescribed him trazodone at night so he'd sleep at night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we last night, I spent half the night up and down. Bend down and up bend down. So yeah, our dog went and, like had tip that and he went like crazy. We didn't know what was going on. Just break one of those in half yeah. and take it yourself. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you watch, go to sleep. Watch the Jackson Methods on his he, you know that they'll start losing his, his hair. Yeah. Well, he's been pulling out his hair anyway. Oh, okay. But He's off the decks now. He's just no, on the gabapentin and the hey. trazodone. And he's on a lot of trazodone. He's on 150 milligrams. Yeah. He's not a big dog. Well, good luck. So you're good up at that. Well, we will get the movement and get out of here. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, start with Miss Sasha over there in the, the corner seat and ask what you have for reports or communications. I just have a list of documents to be signed. Put licenses Okay, so we can then have a Stantec chain order and all the two values. Mm-hmm. Alright. Um then we're gonna go here to Mr. Robin. Robin, what do you do you have anything for us? Uh, I only I did send an email on the ACO. There was two changes that I recommended. I, I think the first email came through which wasn't complete. And I resent the second email today. There was only basically two changes. Uh, one was that we need to add the comment because uh, it says on public property, but we need to add or private property of another residence because the definition of public property in Google is truly public property. Okay. So yeah. by putting that in that, it would basically make it null and void because any decent lawyer could come in and say, hey, well, if the dog wasn't on public property, so. Sure, oh, good, good, know, good dog. It, it actually could come back to haunt us because if we were to impound a dog that was on someone's private property, then right. we would be held legally responsible for violating our own, our own ordinance. And then the other point was it says a law enforcement officer, and that should simply read an enforcement officer because in the definition up above, it says the town will appoint enforcement officers up to and including the ACO yeah. Yeah. and not a law enforcement officer because that would apply a police officer. Everything else in the, in the document complete was, was solid, so I didn't see any other changes that I would recommend other than that. All right, so we'll, and so they are in an email if it. Yeah, no, I saw Sasha had that for so the second email. Okay, great. Send it out when yeah. it's complete now, and then on our next meeting, maybe that's something we can uh, we'll go uh, address. We'll we'll okay. That was all I have. Kelly down there in Europe? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there was that email from Bobby helping about ATVs on class three roads. So it is coming back. I know we had that discussion last year. Mm -hmm. And it is probably going to come around. I'm actually really surprised he wasn't here tonight. What's, so. the, what's the feeling from the board? Well, I've talked to people in our neighborhood, and they're most of the people who live on the borders of those roads or against it. Specifically Herringbrook Road. Mm -hmm. I know exactly yeah. who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Not yeah. yeah. Trust me. Well, there's only two people. It's, too. you know, I, and I mean, I can name names or I can't, but uh, I personally, my personal opinion is people who are going to drive on the roads are going to drive on in this area anyway. There's no mm -hmm. enforcements whatsoever. The minute we open it up and say everybody can come, 
then everybody and their brother is going to come with ATVs, and I foresee that as being a potential problem, but maybe I'm overreacting. Where are they going to go? I mean, in I, I'm going to go, I mean, I would go around and ask people how they felt about it. I did at that process. I, I, I'm just not 100% sure if I would approve it. I'd have to. I'd have to be convinced. I mean, we have no, there are no connecting state, AT, the ATV, so there are no connecting trails. In, oh, okay. In essence, yeah. the area. Okay. There are none. So, because the only one that was a possibility was Northfield and the person who <laughs> used to own um, Fresh Tracks. Because that was where the connecting piece was going to be. Actually, mm -hmm. ended up shutting that yeah, down. Yeah, she shut it. Down. So there, there are no connecting trails. So I don't think, in essence, opening it up is going to bring More anybody ownership. else in. Mm -hmm. And in seeing how this works in other areas, I mean, if you go up, you know, up by Danville, I mean, they have a massive system that. Yeah. Works yeah. pretty well. And I mean, you think, I mean, the people that are going to do it are going to do it right. anyway, and they're not, in essence, being unsafe. I mean, I'm. Right. So, the only. I remember, we had the um, lieutenant in from the state police, right? Because we were more, all right, what happens if we have this? And he, he told us right out straight, he's not enforcing anything. Right. Yeah. And he's not. You know, yeah. he's not coming here for that. What, if somebody's driving their ATV on, right. on a legal yeah. trail or whatever? Then um, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. That's my, I mean, um, that's my take on it. Yeah. If it's a local resident and they want to drive their ATV around the thing, that's fine. If somebody wants to put their ATV on a trailer and park on the side of the road and drive that, I'm fine with that. As far as actually opening it up and saying publicly to the state, like they did in Newport, yeah, you can start driving ATVs down the middle of the road. I don't but think our town would support that. I just don't think they up, would. I think it opens us up for a yeah. liability. I'd rather have people just go in and do it. Yeah, yeah. Which I think is what we, you know, a lot of people. people. I mean, we're already having issues with the people who want to close off that legal trail, you know. Now if we say, well, well yeah, we're, we're just going to let uh, every ATV in the world drive down that legal trail, those people are going to, well, I don't want to say what they'll do, but they're going to be even more upset. So, yeah. I, I don't know. I, yeah, I, yeah, that's, that's kind of your... I don't know for discussion. Why don't you do some more research yeah. and then... Yeah, I'll talk and, to Bobby. Yeah. I know Bobby anyway. And, and see what... I, I mean, if there's a benefit, I mean, yeah. what benefits to do it or if it could be selected like i would be willing to say like if he had a certain connecting trail that he's like yeah this would be a great one to open up then maybe i'd consider it on a case-by-case -case basis but just to say every class four road or every legal trail in the town of moortown is now open to atv traffic i, 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 I don't really think, have i don't think we would do that if yeah. we were going to open something i think it would be more specific yeah. you know yeah. there's a vast trail right here this would be a great connecting link yeah, I would be certainly open to all that. Because one of the things that Bobby mentioned was, was a safe, safety issue. Right. Because, you know, requiring helmets and things like that. Yeah. And, and the bottom line is, there's nobody to enforce those rules anyway. So. Right. Yeah. So, so someone gets hurt and we said it's okay and they yeah. forget to wear a helmet and nobody was enforcing it and the town's now liable because, you know, they just had a 14 year old girl get killed the other day, rolled her ATV. Right. Yeah. 14 year old. Yeah. And number one, what you're doing riding an ATV at 14 years old, and be able to roll over. But, well, um, there are people down the road who are riding ATVs at 11. No, I know. So I mean, I, I, I'm just saying that. it's tragic to see a 14-year-old yes. girl die. Uh, it's, it's just a tragic, tragic, tragic thing. But oh, that's, yeah. that's another thing. Sure. Right there. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't talk to him. Just, you know, if you see what you, you know, this, yeah. I know you looked into it last year, and then after the trooper was here, we kind of, we all kind of, well, it really didn't seem like there was a lot of benefit for the town to do this. Yeah. And with no yeah. enforcement. But, you know, find out what you find out. Okay. Because yeah. I'm pretty sure, I think it's his 
girlfriend, I think, has worked with a lot of other towns on making it legal, like through the state. Yep. So they've, yeah. in essence, been through the process and what it looks like. So I, I, yeah. so I may have some And I'm not sure if the town them. can be held legally liable or not uh, by opening up a public road any more than we can would be liable if somebody um, was to drive into the schoolyard and run over somebody. Yeah, it's no, really no. not. It's, just a, it's a public byway, so right. yeah, we, know, have immunity. we have immunity yeah. at that point. But. I mean, you think about everything okay. else. There are laws protecting horses being on the road. Yeah, and there well should be. There was a woman who lives on Wordbrook who was hit riding a horse on the road. So, I mean, there's, oh, yeah. there's a whole other. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, it doesn't. Anything can happen to. It. Yeah. It's just not machinery things. It's yeah. you know, everything. People just need to be. I mean, just you see the guy. In, yeah, two weeks ago, a guy in a freaking bike race got was killed because yeah. he yeah. went on the wrong side of the road or something like that. I'm thinking. Well, All right, John. Anything? Uh, you? Yeah. The uh, finally. The, Contract with Pullman has been signed. Good. Um, so that project can get underway on the 15th. Um, Great. We're getting a little nervous because he's having a problem with the registration with the state. But uh, anyway, it's got that all resolved. And that's 6.15, that's there? June, yeah, 6, June yeah. 15th. And he's, yeah. he's really confident that, um, that They'll be able to, you know, do everything on time and Great. So we, start on we time. need someone on site as far as to inspect and, and like it. Well, so the the, the RFPs have gone out, and um, Ray Ray came back actually with some very good points, and so between Ray, Sasha, and myself, we learned all that out. All right, so um, we're working on that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the only only thing what was the the number that originally that twelve thousand three hundred and seventy three um, and and that's why Brian asked about fifteen thousand but I mean we don't want to put that in the RFP because right, that's, that's, what that's, 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 that's what they'll that's what you're gonna pay, yeah. <laughs> so well yeah. We'll put twelve thousand in and then if it changes then we'll so, yeah. you can come back and ask for a little. Okay. So um, so that was the, the only other thing on that. So okay. hopefully, well, oh, did, what was the date we set for that? I don't know. Well, we better should set a date. So I, I, well, I thought you'd already put it in the RFP. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going to have to look that up. I think there was a, I thought there was a place to put that. I mean, you put down, you're the contact, right? Okay, and, that, and so I, I think we should have it so that we can decide by next uh, next meeting. Okay. Yeah, because we're going to need to figure something out. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Um, and that's that's pretty much all I have. Okay. I think I I think I brought you up to speed on the tree. Uh, oh, I, th yeah. I actually I didn't. Uh, uh, you mentioned the tree last uh, week, but right. Did we get a quote on uh, Barrett's no, plan um, or whatever it was? The uh, uh, TDS said basically the same thing that the power company said. Uh, you know, they, they don't have it in their budget for preventive. Things that they wait until it yeah. falls so, down, right? Yeah. The tree comes yeah. down and then right. they fix the so, line. Yeah. yeah. So I think what, what I told Sasha is, you know, we'll we'll hire somebody to take it down and just send out for and try and collect a third of the bill from TDS and another third from yep. the head. Okay. They'll, they'll probably say no, but it doesn't hurt to try. Right. After all, it's, it's the, their lines were help, helping them. Right. So, potentially. 
But they said that it was the town's town responsibility. Did, yeah, responsibility. Well, bottom line, they could see that it was undercut. You know, oh, in the it was winter, under, during the winter. By, the, by our machinery and right. it's on exactly. our proper our right right away. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's in our right away. Right. Right. So I'd say we get and it's a, it, Martin, Martin's property and Guy Martin said that he would uh, we'll take the logs, the, right? the logs, yes. Okay. So you were going to reach out to Barrett's or, or, or Price? Uh, we've got that. Uh, Martin's going to market. Martin's going to have market trade. And then I'm going to get people that do yeah, Remember, Donnie had some. Yeah, he gave us that. Yeah, yeah. He, he gave us that right with the next day okay. after our last meeting. Because so. I had one of those guys do, you know, the climb the trees, and he did a freaking amazing, amazing, amazing job. I mean, I don't know if he's capable of stopping traffic and all that stuff, but yeah, he can yeah. take down, they, there's guys yeah, that can take guy. down every tree, any tree without cranes. I mean, they're amazing. Huh. Um, now, while I was on the phone with Guy, he asked about access to his property. Um, now, my recollection, recollection was that um, it was going to be marked by the surveyor. Yeah, it should be all marked and they, should, they can go on any time they want. But it's nothing, nothing's been cut yet. Nothing's been cut. Did we want to cut it? <clears throat> Personally, I think we should probably cut it. So, yeah, everyone knows where it is. Right. Say, here's where right. it is. Here's the cut. And <laughs> yeah, that was not any question. Right. So there's right. no questions, yeah. and then people can do it. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. And so, well, and, and my recollection is we um, we walked that several different times. There's really not a lot to cut there. It's it's kind of junky. Right. Crap. Um, maybe you could reach out. To um, the Blodgett and ask him, do you, we're going to cut this if you don't? I think that was one of the agreements that we had. Right, there. and I thought, yeah, but they had we, so many. We did, days. we did mention, yeah, they didn't. But you're right, I can. I can you just say, hey, do you want? Because I'd rather them. As long as they cut it, I don't care. Right. You know where the wood, this is, the wood on it's not any good. Um, and but cut out the full. Right away, yeah. You know, side to side. I think I don't know. Was it two rods that we had, or whatever it was? I can't remember exactly what the road was. Um, but we started right, right by the road and just all the way up, so it can be done. Yeah. And, and that's it. Okay. Um, yeah. So check with them, see what they want, and then we can we can check with our guys and see what see what they think mm -hmm. where they okay. can. Go in and you know if they you know would have to be done all at once um, and again you know, just be cut and pushed off to the side. We don't need to pick it up. Okay. We don't need to anything else. Just cut it and push it off to the push side. Sure. I think. That's right. Good. Does that sound yeah. good for everyone? Yeah. 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 So giving, just let me know the width. It's giving them access. So. Yeah. Yeah. It should be on the agreement, Sarah. It will be somewhere in front of this a normal trail. It's a normal trail, so whatever the trails are. But that should be well pinned so and marked so we know both sides of it. Right. I think that's what was we asked. Okay. Um, all right, so I have a few different things. I'm gonna start with Don had um, he had let's see. Uh, good morning, Tom. The library had sent us. Uh, it was a request, and what they were what they were requesting is um, that we base the seven percent raise that we gave the um, assistant librarian mm -hmm. that we base that on sixteen dollars an hour rather than um, the fourteen ninety nine. Because the library trustees are asking us that because they um, they make up the donations um, or they did last year to the sixteen dollars an hour they wanted to pay their assistant library sixteen dollars an hour we were paying fourteen ninety nine dollars okay. um, and then we gave seven percent on that um, 
$14.99. But she's actually making 16 so it's basically what we're asking or they're asking us is to base that 7% again on 16 rather than $4.99. So 7% of a dollar and one cent is yeah. the, the difference. Mm -hmm. um, so some, so um, we'll bring the hourly rate out hourly rate to seventeen twelve because it would be a dollar twelve, right? Um, rather than well, that's only seven cents. Yeah, an hour, is it? Yeah, it's I mean, not very much. Yeah, all right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, that's all right. But I can, let me just read his 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 uh, his email to me so it's straight. The library assistant was getting fourteen ninety nine an hour, and then in twenty two, the library trustees gave a raise to sixteen dollars an hour using donations. In twenty three, which would be this year, the channel wide raise of seven percent was given to the fourteen ninety nine. Uh, what the library trustees are asking for is that the seven percent be raised on the sixteen dollars an hour, dollar twelve, bring their hourly rate to seventeen twelve. So I guess it's pretty simple um, and not very much. My original thought was that they actually wanted us to do a salary adjustment, a salary adjustment to the sixteen, and then right add it on to that. But um, we're not, you know, that's not. I guess what is asked. They're just asking us to do a raise on the sixteen dollar per hour, which I think okay. is fair to do. Yeah, um, like I said, it's. What seven cents per hour? Yeah. Yeah. So, so if it's, seven yeah, cents I mean, if it's if it's seven percent uh, of a dollar, a dollar, a dollar yeah, yeah, that's pretty easy math. Do the math on that. Uh, uh, my old people. How many hours a week, Sasha? Twenty-two. Say. No, not the assistant. She's less than. Oh, the assistant. That's yeah. just the assistant. So yeah. it's less than a buck a week. So yeah. Much. Yeah. Can you explain if you're going to do a motion anyways? But seven percent on the difference between the fourteen ninety nine and what she's making now? Yeah. So we had given a seven percent raise on fourteen ninety nine. Right. And he would like us to give a seven percent raise based on the sixteen dollar an hour rate that they're actually paying her because they're paying. Extra out of their donations to make out of their donations right? okay. to sixteen dollars an hour. And so they just wanted the raise based on what they were what giving. they were actually giving her. So sixteen oh seven. Yeah. So they can go back and so say we're actually giving you a they're they're gonna go back and say we're giving you a seven percent raise instead of a six point nine nine percent no. raise or whatever it might be, you know. I think that's fine. Let me just let's just do the math and see if they're not expecting us to pay the additional amount. We're still only gonna give them Fifteen dollars plus seven percent per hour. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So we're going to give them fifteen plus. Would we say seventy? I think she's at six. No, six. Four right now. That's what she gets right now. She gets what? Okay. Sixteen four. So what the difference is is, um, right plus. She'd be getting sixteen thirty nine, sixteen four cents. As you, someone just said that. A week um, or a year or per hour. Per hour. And oh yeah, yeah, sixteen oh three per hour. Right. Yes. And um, and they're going to cover basically a dollar. Uh, they're covering basically a dollar. So the raise we originally gave a dollar four raise. Yeah, and, we're gonna and it's dollar. now going to be a dollar twelve. Twelve. Huh. Right. Okay. Okay. So total of seventeen. Right, a total of 17, uh, 12, 17, 12 and a half. 17, 12 and a half. So let me try to make this so it's clear. Um, I'd move that we, well, actually, it should be fair. Please, I move that we base the, um, the right. secondary library, library and uh, proposed 7% raise is based on $16 an hour for a $1.12 per hour raise. I'll we'll second that. Any further discussion? Hmm? All in favor, vote aye. Aye. All right. Aye. All right. All right. So there's the right sensor. So. All right. So Don can 
sounds a little nitpicky for change when they're up in the right anyway. Right. Yeah. Well, um, I think they just want to tell the girl you're going to get a 7% raise. If you say, well, that's 7% off the $14.99 the town gives you, it just makes it a lot more complicated for the poor girl in the world. So, so why nickel dime? We're going to give you a six point nine five percent raise for seven cents. <laughs> so we got that. Really worth this Thank case. you, everyone. Um, and so you heard a uh, discussion with Frank tonight. Yes. Thank you for. I mean, it, I mean, I think it, that makes sense. It promoted, <laughs> a, it promoted action on on. I think what we did last time. Right. Basically woke him up and said, "Hey, I got to do something." So I mean, the fact that he showed up today and they're willing to talk, right. I think that opens the door for your conversation that you were going to hold with him two weeks ago. Right. Or, yeah. You know. And whether this guy has the credentials or not, I, I'm a little even with the insurance because you know, he's, uh, it doesn't have to be Monday. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Together, so yeah. We'll see. Yeah, I was a little skeptical myself, you know. Uh, I mean, he got uh, awful red a few times there for absolutely no reason, which I thought was a little suspect. But uh, I get red too when I talk in public sometimes. So. So do I. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, and I, I again, get to the table. The, right. I mean, remember what our goal was. That's what yeah. I'm trying to say. Uh, yeah, our so goal get people was to get people in there. Get right. 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 And mm -hmm. you know, we don't need to get in the way to say, you know. Yeah. If the guy can do and it. obviously there, there's animosity if they if you know at this point there's there's going to be animosity between the contractor and Frank and his tenants there's no way that's not going to happen right we no. can't do anything about that all we can do is continue to work with Frank we've, we've offered to help get him financial assistance which should help with their budgeting process uh, yeah. I you know I think open the discussion. I mean, anyway, and it probably will not go anywhere, and we'll probably be still, you know, obviously they're still moving forward with the receivership after last meeting, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so I will so obviously we'll we'll pick out some times, and I want at least two of us there, but okay. more than two because then we'll have to warn it, and it'll be a real pain in the butt. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'll figure it out, and then I'll reach out to, to John, and for some reason I can't be around, then. John will reach out to someone else on the board to, to join in the board. If John can't yeah, if it's, if it's during out. the day, that's easier for me. Uh, and if, you know, for whatever reason, John can't make it or you can't make it or something, I'd be willing to just sit there and listen to whatever sure. anybody has to say. I mm -hmm. can't solve any problems, but I can listen. Uh, someone, you know. Um, we have, I think, such as any other, I just want to make sure there are no other emails that have come in. The one okay. about the the, uh, the Cobb Hill Road thing. Right, Sasha did right. send out uh, okay. a letter to them letting them know that it was not possible. Uh, right, but he wanted all the correspondence from the dislike board had, but oh, there was okay. none. Yeah. There was no correspondence whatsoever. Was there? I mean, no. no one emailed anybody. Yes, there is. And oh. I'm talking to Ron because it's a very sensitive situation. Yeah, I understand that. So, okay, so there was a meeting. Yeah, so we don't know whether there would be, um, okay. because Travis asked for the uh, the email that she sent, and because there's other circumstances surrounding all that, okay. we need to check to see if that's something that we can do. Okay. But otherwise, it's public knowledge, but, but because there's a um, uh, protective The restraining order or whatever. Yeah, else. may not. That may muddle things up a little. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. I, there's no doubt it will. But again, legal trails are for the public good of all residents. Right. Exactly. So, um, so that's all I had. If we look down a little business, I don't think there's really much there that we need to address. Um, so unless anyone has any new business going mm -hmm. on, we can go ahead and sign the stuff that Sasha has I'll, for us. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. 5-1. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Those are good. Sasha, I mean, uh, Callie, did you second that? Yes, I did. Yeah, she's been waiting for it. All right, thank you. All in favor, good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.
sent the invoice for that four thousand dollars. Where would you guys like me to take that money from? Four thousand dollars for your name service? Is that just a standing contract or no, they come the month the uh Waterbury was us last year. Was it Waterbury? Yeah. Oh, okay. looking for an additional donation uh, for the new facility break. And at that point, we decided to do that. And I think we oh. put that in the budget. It was one of the, I don't think it needed. We Was trying to figure that out. So here's a question for everybody. So we have um, application for a catering permit up at Bliss Ridge. And we, I guess they're allowed, what, 10 parties in a year or 10 functions or something like that. Um, however, they have basically given us the, um, I don't know say that, but the, anyways, they have continued to promote and advertise that they're uh, of their tree houses and that they're building another one and bringing another one online. And that goes against the DRB and, and everything. Is there any reason why we should sign these? If, if they're not, I mean, I know it's two different things, but they're not respecting the decision of the DRB in fact, they're flaunting almost by promoting and saying, you know, in publications that they have uh, other things coming online. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't know if I want to give them the, the permit. This no, is, okay. this is signing the permit? Yeah, no, I would I, I, I thought this about that all last night. This is not liquor license. This is for something different. Oh, catering. Oh. Oh, a liquor like Oh, okay. But it's the same organization. The same team. Okay. Uh, no, I I, I, I I, thought about it. I mean, I, I'd say we shut it down, you know. At least no, we're, we're not going to come here and explain, and explain their thing. Yeah. Why and we can are... be like, okay, well, yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 yeah. I, don't, I don't have any interest in signing it. Um. I have, mixed, I have mixed feelings on it, but I think that bottom line, if we don't, don't sign it, they'll be contacting us. Right. And then we have, have them in. Well, yeah. Just to open a discussion yeah, at least, right? You know, yeah, I think just yeah. to open the discussion. A little bit of a care, a little care yeah. and stick approach, but I, I mean, I think it, it's warranted at that point. Uh, Rob and I didn't sign the payroll. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. This one or this one? No, I signed the top one. Oh. And so we do have um, okay. uh, a request for catering to come out. This is Farmhouse Flowers. And they're doing everything that they're supposed to be doing. So we'll go ahead and sign them up. But, um, I mean, that, does that make sense to everybody? On the, yeah, on the, the other catering? Right. Yeah. yeah, no, I think a care of the strict approach is, is, is valid at this point. It'll get them in here and we'll like, well, you know, you can kind of just say, well, you know, why should you approve of this if you're, you know, calling this box? So we're going to have to Tom use his words and not mine. But yeah, if you're, you know, you consider it to ignore, you know, other things by the board, what makes us think you won't do this in regards to your catering, catering yeah. application, right? You know, you're willing to bend the rules, what makes you think, you know, it's your horse meat, I don't know. I, I, I think it's using our leverage. I'm wondering why we don't, you know, wait for the environmental board and shut the place right down. I mean, uh, I'm curious, like, what, because I know, like, you know, the, uh, and I don't want to go off topic, because I know we're all anxious, but, 
But like that gun range that they shut down, down uh, where they had the militia place, I mean, that was completely done on the zoning ordinances of, of the town, where they actually made the guy remove buildings. Do we have any, any authority to just, at this point, or before it goes to the Environmental Review Board and say it's against the DRB and start moving towards actually forcing them to remove the building? Um, so, uh, I'm uh, going to put together, uh, I spoke to Ron about this, uh, I guess actually on Friday afternoon, mm -hmm. and so I'm putting together a meeting with Ron, Karen, John Riley, he's the head of the DRB, okay. yeah. to, to, to kind of figure that out. Okay. To what we should do. Mm -hmm. We should do. Yeah. Um, we can't just let them rub it in our face. You know, that, just makes, that just opens the door for the next person to do the exact same thing. Um, uh, and I'm sure they probably will win ultimately, and that's fine. But well, they have. There's some things. I mean, even talking with Ron, I mean, there's. We can try to work with people, but there's just some things that are you just you can't. Can't fix. I mean, there, you know, there's some setbacks there that um, you know, ran out our standards. But there's nothing we can do about it. So I don't know when you say make it win. I don't know if that's actually accurate um, because there are some things that are just so black and white. How do you get around it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. You I know, mean, I know. So, I know they have money, and I think right. And I think money talks. You know, right, and and, you know they can. They have the ability to be able to wait us out. You know. Right, and that's the thing. You, you get know, tired. Come back to this too, yeah. as far as and any if, other. Yeah. Um, and if they're generating five thousand dollars a month in revenue on a building mm -hmm. that's illegal, you know, they don't have a lot of incentive not to cooperate. I mean, to cooperate. Right. You know. mm -hmm. like, yeah. Okay. Well. So you know, we, got our rent, we got it. We got our tree house rented on B Airbnb for the next three years. You know. Go ahead and yeah, Now, I know somebody that'll move into the place and never move out. So, if you, <laughs> want, if you want to use that as a possible option, I can no. give you a list of phone numbers. <laughs> if you right. can't evict somebody from an illegal building. <laughs> All right, folks, we can dress here. Uh, there's nothing else. I'd move to adjourn. Okay. I I'll say goodbye. Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Nice to see you again.